A perfect fall day for football, Michigan and Michigan State. Hi, everybody. I'm Tim Brand, along with Mike Golick. Glad to have you along for what should be just a terrific matchup here in the Big Ten. Everybody knows Michigan loves to run the football. Michigan State, number one against the run. What gives? Well, I would tell Michigan early, don't try to be too macho. I know you're going to try to establish that line of scrimmage with the big offensive line and the run up the middle, but then they do a great job with Anthony Thomas with the misdirection plays and the counter plays. Now they establish that running game. Now Tom Brady, who does most of his damage in the pocket, has time to look downfield. 199 runs, 164 passes. That's great balance against an attacking Michigan State defense. That'll work. Keep them on their heels. All right, Michigan State's Bill Burke is having a terrific year. But I got to believe he needs early success here today. Well, success, patience, and a little guts as well because what Michigan is going to do is they're going to try and blitz him. Not all out blitzes, but they're going to try and make Burke throw the ball quickly to his hot receiver. They do that, they'll only gain three or four yards. He has to have confidence in his offensive line, tight ends, and running backs that they'll pick up the blitzers, giving him patience and time in the pocket to let his wide receivers develop their routes down the field. You're fired up, partner. Ready to go. Hey, kickoff is near. When we come back, we'll take you to New York for the very latest on Peter Warren. Then it's back here for the Wolverines and the Spartans. We're just about set for kickoff. 72,000 here today. Right now, let's go down on the field to the third member of our team, Chip Tarkington, who is with Michigan State head coach Dick Saban. All right, thanks, Tim. Coach, what'd you tell your team before you came on the field? Well, I think the most important thing for us to do in this game is get intelligent execution with relentless type of competitive spirit for 60 minutes. And if we can do that, that'll give us the best chance to win the football game. Emotionally, are you ready? I think so. Right. How could you not be? That's right. Congratulations. Good luck to you, Coach. You. All right, that's Coach. We're ready to go. Let's kick it out, Tim. All right. I think everybody's excited here today. Look at Lloyd Carr. Had a great talk with him yesterday, and he's excited to be here. There are just over 50 miles as the crow flows, flies between Ann Arbor and East Lansing. And everybody in this state is either for the Spartans or for the Wolverines, there's no in between. No, you have to draw battle lines today. You're either wearing, wearing the uh, the maize and blue or the green, and there's there's an easy distinction of who you're rooting for today across the state. Michigan won the toss, deferred. Michigan State will receive the opening kickoff, and so you saw Hayden Epstein teeing it up to Gary Scott and Herb Haygood will be deep for Michigan State. So Epstein is just about ready. What a great scene for college football. Spartan Stadium, more than 72,000 have poured in here today. A deep kick. Haygood is seven yards deep and he'll down it to bring it out to the 20. Chile's starting lineup offensively for Michigan State, an excellent offensive line, averaging 295 pounds, two seniors, three juniors. Peko, Sakura, Jensen's a senior, Mason, and Robinson Randall is a senior. The receivers led by Plaxico Burris. Folks, he is 6'6", 222 pounds. He's coming off a terrific three-touchdown game against Iowa. He's hot. Baker, 6'3", Scott, 6'2". In the backfield, it all starts with Bill Burke. He's thrown a touchdown pass in each of his last nine games. Lloyd Clemens is the leading rusher, averaging over six yards a game. First down, Michigan State. This is Clemens. Absolutely nothing there for Lloyd Clemens. Defensively for Michigan, Rob Renus is the leader up front, the strongest guy on the team. He has 285 pounds on both sides of him, Williams and Wilson. The linebackers are Brooks, Gold, Jones, and Hall, all experienced and aggressive with bad intentions. And in the secondary, James Whitley is 5'11". Hendricks, a big safety, 6'2", 215. Patman is 6 feet, and Todd Howard is 5'10". So both corners are under 6 feet, going against 6'6 six, six receivers. And there's a look at the Hani Jones. Second down, they still almost need 10. Pressure, screen, Clemens, hit. And there's a loss on the play. Back to the 15. Bill Burke has thrown a touchdown pass in each of the last nine games. Four touchdowns, Mike, against Iowa. What Bill Burke needs to do here, he's got to, he's got great touch and great accuracy. Not the strongest arm in the world, and this experience is going to need to pull him through today because Michigan, a very disciplined defense. Doesn't have a gun back there. He's not going to rifle in it. He's more of a spot passer. He'll throw to an area, and he knows, Tim, how to get the ball to his tall receivers. 
Not exactly the situation that he wanted here. It's third down and 14. Michigan's coming. They bring the blitz. They're going deep, and they're looking in the direction of Richardson. He makes the catch. No. Out of bounds. Well, Vale Richardson made the catch. They said he was out of bounds. The coverage was by James Whitley. Well, State did a great job of picking up the blitz. Richardson did a great job of catching the ball. That one's on Bill Burke. He's got to throw the ball more to the inside of the field. You see, the pressure never gets to him. He sees his receiver. The ball's going to the outside. Well, that looks like, well, no. well the ball caused, the, the ground caused the ball to come out. It did look like his knee might have been down for the reception. So Greg Jarrett comes on to punt. He ranks 13th nationally, 44 yards a punt. And Marcus Knight is standing at the 45. This is a rocket. Knight goes all the way back to the 26-yard line. Picks up a block. He's got some room. And returns it to the 39. So a 57-yard punt and a return of 12 yards. Take a look at the Chili's offensive starting lineup for Michigan. Big, physical, talented line. Everybody around 300 pounds except for David Brandt, the leader in the middle. He's 267. The receivers, David Terrell, six foot three, two-way star now, but uh, he is the leading receiver and will play mostly offense. Tom Brady is the trigger man, and everybody knows that he's been on a pretty good roll. And Anthony Thomas, as you look at the back, 6'2", 225 as a load. His blocker ahead of him, Shea, 251 pounds. First down, Wolverines. Thomas, nothing. Take a look at the defense for Michigan State, the number one run defense in the country, and they showed it on that first play. It's Myers, Shaw, Thomas, and Smith across the front. And keep an eye on Robert Smith, the linebackers. Peterson is the guy to watch. T.J. Turner and Josh Thornhill, both very active linebackers. And in the secondary, they will press up within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Amp Campbell back from the neck injury. Morris is outstanding, the leading tackler. Newsom and Hill are also quality players. Second down and nine. Almost intercepted. Oh, great defensive play by Amp Campbell. He almost had the pick. When you look at Tom Brady, his strength, poise, confidence, accuracy, really experienced, a fifth-year senior, but this guy can hang in the huddle again. Not a gun for an arm, but puts the ball where it needs to be. Not on that last pass, though. Not a very good pass. His weakness is his mobility. When you see Drew Henson come in, he's a better quarterback out of the pocket. Great indicator here. Michigan State failed to convert on third and long. We'll see what Michigan does. It's third and about nine. Pressure. It's complete, but short of the first down. We'll see where the mark is. And now they say he's incomplete. His feet were out of bounds, and again, it was Amp Campbell on the coverage. Well, either way, that was going to be a, a short of the first down. The pass wasn't far enough, and Terrell didn't run the pattern to the sticks. First offensive series for both, almost identical. Well, absolutely. Both defenses trying to establish this now. Michigan State, sixth straight game where the first series, the, uh, the opponent's offense has not scored a point. Corey Sargent's been averaging 39 yards a punt. This is a wobbler. And Scott will try to return it to the 25 and out to the 27-yard line. A 42-yard punt, 11-yard return. We are still scoreless in East Lansing. Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan, no score. Both, both, both ball clubs have had it offensively one series. Here's first down now for Michigan State. Burke gets out of the pocket, throws, and incomplete. It was intended for Gary Scott. Mike, take a look at the Dell Game Solutions. Well, for Michigan State, it's very simple. Control the front seven of that Michigan defense. Michigan State doesn't come off the ball and try and blow you off the ball. They'll do some man blocking and some zone blocking, but they've got to control those seven, especially in Michigan defense, Dahani Jones. This guy fills gaps so quickly, he beats the blocker to the block. He did it very well against Wisconsin when they were facing Ron Dane. He knows how to get play on the other side of the line. It's an attacking type defense. Michigan State offensive line really has their work cut out today, not just for the D-line of Michigan, but get to those linebackers. They know when they run the ball effectively, the Spartans generally win. Second down and long for Burke. Throws out. Here's the first pass caught by Plaxico Burris. 
James Whitley, the 5'11 corner, was covering no match for the 6'6 burst, a gain of 14. See, this is a pure timing route. 12 yard out, he's not, he's just breaking. The ball's already on the way. Again, because Burke doesn't have great arm strength, he makes that throw before the cut. Puts it right on the mark for Burst. Easy catch. So it's a first down for the Spartans. Great field position now after the 42. We'll see what that does to the playbook. Here's Chris Baker in motion. This is Clements. And by completing the pass, the running game starts to go. Well, absolutely. Again, best way to stop a defense is to get them on their heels, get them guessing. You just complete a long pass. Now that makes your linebackers think a little more. You come back in the middle run. Watch the, the left the left guard here, Tupe Pico, pulls out a little bit, gets a nice block down the line. Opens up. Good job by Clements coming back inside of him. Second down and three. It's a great time for Michigan State to start looking for Burris. They normally do in second and short. Instead, they give the run to Clements. He'll be close to the first down, just a yard short. Dwayne Patman, the free safety, came up and made the tackle. Michigan leads this series 60, 26, and 5, and the Wolverines have won seven of the last ten. They're playing for the Paul Bunyan Trophy. <laughs> and Lloyd Carr says it's the ugliest trophy in all of sport. I would imagine they're playing more for the meaning of it than the actual hardware itself. Well, I bet it's a lot uglier when you don't have it. Absolutely. Third down and one. Jumbo attack. Straight ahead they go. And it's the first down. T.J. Duckett, the freshman, 6'2", 255 pounder. And I mean, folks, that is smash mouth football. Absolutely. And just what I said about the Honey Jones, watch him fill. He's flying up. He's taking that hole away. Good job. They just shift the whole play to the outside. And Duckett, a true freshman at 255, just runs over the free safety. T.J. Duckett, the... Well, his brother wore number 35. He wears number 8 because he says it's the sum of the digits on his brother Tico's jersey. 35, 3, 5, 8. And Here's Burke. Has time. Looks out there. He's got Burris. Move the change for Michigan State. This is a mistake I think Michigan's already making, Tim. I think you need to come up and play these receivers. They're giving him too much room. He's a big receiver. He's fast, but he's not that fast. You have to get up and challenge him. Again, the throw is made before the cut. He's turning around. Todd Howard, the cornerback, you can't turn around. You've got to turn your hips and break on the ball, giving him way too much room. Am I making too much of the mismatch in the size? He's 6'6". They're going against five, ten and a half inch corners. And right now they don't even have to. That, that was like a regular route. They haven't even used the size advantage yet. A gain of 24, first down for State. Duckett, big hole, still on his feet. T.J. Duckett to the 11, there is a flag. Oh, that's going to be holding on Casey Jensen, the center. It's a smart move by Duckett to cut back right away. He saw the hole. But this one is going to come back. Well, Casey Jensen should know better. He's a senior. He's got his hands full today, though, with Rob Renis, the nose tackle of Michigan, the strongest player probably on this field. Jensen was a guard. They moved him to center. He now makes the calls up front. Center right here. That's who the call's on. See, Renis, oh, he hooked him. What, what the referee saw is that right hand on the outside of his shoulder pad. Now, Jensen did a smart thing of pulling it back, but unfortunately it was the timing. The referee saw it when his arm was out. Smart play to pull it back, but he just got caught. Huge penalty for Michigan State. And being an ex-defensive lineman, I say great call. <laughs> <laughs> That's a matchup to watch. Jensen is 6'7", Renus is 6'1", and has great leverage to get underneath his pads. I think we both came into this game feeling Michigan State needed early success as a confidence builder. They've got to come away from this first drive with points. First successful drive. They were three and out the first one. Here's Clemens. Nothing. So that'll bring up second down and a taxi cab ride for the Spartans. That penalty definitely hurt them too. They had some good, good momentum going. Then you go to first and 20. 
Again, a nice fill that time by James Hall, the linebacker. Those linebackers do such a great job of playing up toward the line. Tremendous atmosphere here on campus all week when we've been out here. Everybody excited about this year's team, and certainly they know this starts a difficult four-game stretch for them. Nick Saban telling us not only Michigan today, but it's followed by Purdue, then Wisconsin and Ohio State. So this is a tough stretch, and this game today is critical. Pass. Bill Burke has some pressure and throws it away. He could feel him coming backside. The pressure was coming from Wilson and Reynos. Good coverage on the out time. Went with the blitz, went with man coverage. Good. Play a little tighter. See, they're actually playing up on him this time. Howard's still getting, he tripped on Howard's foot is what happened. And the ball never got, never got, never got a chance uh, to make the break for it. So then even with the pressure coming, that is probably why he threw it away more so than the pressure. He but, saw his receivers, his intended receiver go down. But that's what Michigan needs to do. They need to play that man. Howard's got to be careful. That's twice now. He's turned his back to the ball, and that could cost him down the road. Third down and 20. This is the ninth play of the drive that started on MSU's 28-yard line. Hit! Hit! Burke going deep, looking for Burris. He's got him and can't hold on. Oh, he had it in his hands and couldn't hold on. Brandon Williams was the defensive back in the area. And Burris looks like he's already wanting to play on Sundays. He's got the little push-off down. Watch, right at the end of the play, he gets a little bit of a push-off. He doesn't have control when he hits the ground. That's why the call is a good call. There he has it. Watch this push out. Little nice little push off at the end. Almost makes a great catch. And I'll tell you, he's 6'6", six, six, if he's 6'5", he's not even getting near that ball. So Paul Ettinger comes on for a 49-yard field goal attempt. He's 10 for 10 this year. It's long enough. No, just short. Just under the crossbar. 8.49 to play in the first quarter. Still no score. Scoreless at Spartan Stadium, 849 to play first quarter. Tim Brandt, Mike Golick, Chip Tarkington with you this afternoon. Number three, Michigan, against number 11, Michigan State. Second series for the Wolverines. First down at the 32-yard line. Tom Brady has Anthony Thomas behind him. Play action. Plenty of time to throw. And has an incompletion. It was intended for Marcus Knight. He couldn't stay in bounds. Amp Campbell was the corner. Right now, let's go down to Chip Tarkington. All right, thanks, Timmy. You know, one of the unique things about Michigan State is their nickname used to be the Aggies. And in fact, back in the 1920s and 1930s, look at what the name of their yearbook was, the Wolverine. That changed in the 30s, believe me. There's more Wolverine stuff here at Michigan State. <laughs> but they had a big bonfire one night there, huh? <laughs> So it's second down and 10 for the Wolverines. This is Knight in motion. A give to Thomas. Looking for running room. Picks up five. Right now, let's take you back to New York. Tim, you had to wonder about Florida State without Peter Warwick. Well, it didn't take long to answer the question here on this Burger King update. Chris Wenke back to pass, his second play of this series. 48 yards to Jermaine Stringer, who dives into the end zone. And Florida State grabs the early lead at 7-0. Also, Minnesota, unbeaten in the Big Ten, facing Wisconsin. They lead it 7-0. You know, John, I think that Miami-Florida State game is going to turn out to be like a track meet. This is Tom Brady now in third down, and all kinds of pressure. Ronaldo Hill came on the blitz from the corner spot, and Tom Brady never had a chance. Well, Jeff Backus, the left tackle, didn't pick it up fast enough, and when he finally saw it, he couldn't get his feet over there in time. It's going to come from the left. Brady's never going to see it until it's too late. Then he just tries to get rid of the ball, but he can't get anything on the ball. That's <laughs> right, Jeff. So Corey Sargent comes on to kick it away. He's not been kicking well and kind of shanks this one off the side of his foot but gets a big bounce. Scott fields it anyway and is hit immediately. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by the all-new Chevy Monte Carlo. The side you show the world is up to you. Chili's a proud sponsor of ABC College Football by Dell Computer. Pioneering direct internet ideas for your business. Be direct, Dell, and the Waterboy. 
Touchstone home video scores with outrageous bonus footage. The water boy. Well, no doubt the defenses are making their mark here early in this game. And I think we expected that coming in. Both, you know, absolutely. Both sides talk defense. In an emotional game like this, First down, that sometimes you don't get the, the crazy plays until a little later. It's going to be down and dirty right in the beginning. That's where defenses usually are at an advantage. Play action for Burke. He's got to complete to his tight end, Chris Baker. And Baker has a first down for Michigan State. He was working against the linebacker, Brady Brooks. A gain of 13. Good job on that by Michigan State. They really took their time in setting up the misdirection play, setting up the run, and letting Burke roll out. And of course, he's a lefty, so when he rolls left, it's an easy throw for him. For two smash mouth football teams, I, see, I think we may see a lot of misdirection today. Well, Michigan State certainly does that with a lot of motion. They'll show you a lot of right. different formations, try to position the defense so they can run some of their schemes. Here they come out now with twins to the bottom of the screen. And they're looking that way. Looking for Scott, incomplete. Looked like Burris and Scott got tangled up in their own routes. James Hall was applying the pressure. There is a flag down, and it's going to be against Michigan. See Burke again. Flow, again, we talked at the beginning. Arm strength, not one of his, not one of his strong points. Ball floating away there. Left side, defense. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. But with that said, he is extremely accurate. As a matter of fact, he's thrown for 200 yards in six of his last nine games. And one thing, it's fun to watch when he throws to these tall receivers is sometimes you'll see the ball behind them or short, and that's by design to let the, the big guys come back for the ball or let them jump for the ball. He's got a good nervous system. Not anxious, he's calm with a sixth sense. Boy, Rivas had a clear free shot and he took it. We'll see who moved. Well, it looked like a couple of guys on the offensive line getting a little jittery there. Prior to the snap, ball starts on the offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. Uh, you see Rod Ro Renas, I mean, he gets all the ball when he lines up. I mean, he is so close to lining up in the neutral zone. So the center not only has to worry about getting the snap off, but he's got to get his hands on that nose tackle quickly. So Michigan jumped and was penalized five. Now Michigan State jumps and gives it right back. They move it back, it'll be first down and ten. The motion gets in the way of concentration. The fact that it's a strong guy that's going to try and jack him up a little bit. <laughs> Here's the flip flicker. Burke looking deep. He's looking for Burris. He's got it. Burris at the 20. Plexico Burris inside the 10. They'll mark it at the 1. He was working against James Whitley, a pickup of 68 yards. But in a game like this, Emotional game, no score in the game. You know it's going to end up probably being a big play that's going to turn the tide. You have a chance for anywhere from five to ten big plays a game. Good job, play action. You have a good running game. You get the play action. You get the pitch back. This time, Burke keeps it inside the receiver. Burris doesn't even have to break stride. We saw a couple other passes where the receiver had to turn to the outside where Burke, where Burke threw it too far outside. This time, hits him right in stride. So Michigan State comes in with a jumbo package. Looking for power football. The rules down here, straight ahead, no fair dodging. Duck it. Touchdown, Michigan State. So Burris set it up. And T.J. Duckett finished it off. You're right there. There's nothing fancy down there. The defensive line is just trying to get penetration. The offensive line just tries to engulf. They put it on the running back. That time it was Duckett, and the defense has to put it on the linebackers. Advantage Michigan State on that play. Paul Edinger for the extra point. And it's good. So Hanniger splits the sticks after T.J. Duckett's touchdown, and it's Michigan State 7, the Wolverines of Michigan. Nothing.
first. It's 7-0. The Spartans. Three plays, 82 yards, and it took 53 seconds. So you were wondering when they were going to open up the playbook. They did it with a flea flicker to Burris. Absolutely. You knew it was going to be a, a big play that had to break this one up, and I just keep throwing to Burris until they tr try and jam him or, or defense him correctly. This is a short kick. And Kevin Bryant is out to the 20 to the 24-yard line, and that's where the Wolverines will start. Let's take a look at it. First, if you're going to play up that close, you got to jam him. Watch right there, he stutters. Whitley stutters when the ball is handed off. Burris leaves him in the dust. Good job that time of Burke again throwing to the inside. He doesn't make Burris have to stop at all or look back for the ball. Could keep going in stride. But if you're going to play that close to Burris, Tim, jam him. You know, we talked about the height advantage, and certainly on the alley-oop, that'll be a big difference. Right. But also, the long legs. He's taking two strides for every five yards he runs, and you see the corners are taking three strides. They, they can't keep up with him. First down for Tom Brady in Michigan. Hit! Underneath he goes. This is Thompson. Thompson out close to a first down. They'll move the sticks. First down, Michigan. Josh Thornhill stopped him there, but a nice looking play for the Wolverines. Right now, let's take you back to New York. Hey, John, what's happening with the Hurricanes? Tim, they had a quick answer to Florida State going up seven to nothing. Kenny Kelly here, a nice drive orchestrated by Kelly. Eight yards here to Reggie Wayne. Ties the game at seven apiece. And don't forget, for more, go to the Bowl Championship Series online at ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network. All right, John, you got a good one going there. We've got one here as well. Michigan's first, first down of the game. So it's first and ten. Shea hit immediately. Nothing there. Great penetration that time by T.J. Turner and Julian Peterson. Well, that's Michigan State's defense all the way. That's why they're number one in the land again, stop on the run. They don't really play a two-gap, meaning they don't take on the offensive lineman. They're going to hit the gap. You're going to see the, the penetration coming. Nobody on them. you got to get on them quicker than that. You're sending a, one of the, as we like to call them, the big uglies out on them. Peterson, too good of an athlete. He can just stay wide. In that case, the back's got to try and string it and maybe cut back underneath. Second down and 12. Brady with time to the flats. And Shea was down immediately, caught the ball on his knees. So in college football, that is down. He can't get up. It's a gain of two. Brady's pass complete to number 36, Aaron Shea. That's a good job. Michigan State just going to kind of play back. Let him have those early catches. Michigan State against the run. <laughs> Notre Dame, my alma mater, the only team to break 100 yards against him. Didn't help, though. Still lost Third the game. Down. Zero rushing touchdowns allowed in game number six. In five games, Michigan State has given up 214 rushing yards. That's amazing. Hit. Third down and long. They're looking for Terrell. Incomplete. Good coverage that time by Ronaldo Hill on David Terrell. And so once again, Michigan will have to punt. This is huge emotionally for Michigan State, not only jump on top, but then to have your defense come out, which is what really runs this team, come out and stop Michigan again. So Corey Sargent is back on again, and this is a good punt. This is a high tail wagger that'll take Scott all the way back inside the five. And knocked out of bounds at the 15. So a 57-yard punt and 11-yard return. A reminder coming up Sunday night on ESPN. It's the Battle of the Bays. Brett Favre and the Packers take on the Buccaneers. Then on Monday night on ABC, Mark Brunel and the high-powered Jacksonville Jaguars go to the Meadowlands to take on the Jets. The 30th anniversary season of Monday Night Football, it continues. Live, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC Sports. Well, the Jets trying to make it now with Rick Meyer, whose, whose stats have gotten better. Bill Parcells kind of did that with Vinny Testaverde. Made a more safe throws, and now Meyer, at this point, flourishing in that offense. Well, Michigan State scored on its last possession. We'll see what happens here. Poor field position for the Spartans. Starting on the 15. Clemens with a hole across the 20 to the 21-yard. Lloyd Clemens, a 5'11", 207-pound senior, 
came into the game with 454 rushing yards. The Honey Jones, we talked about how he attacks. Here he goes. He wants to block the blocker. He's selling himself out one for one. He's making the back cut. Good job by Baker, the tight end, in blocking him. But the Honey Jones friends and teammates, they've got to come along and help. That's his job to eat up that block and make the back cut. What a great story to Honey Jones, Churchill High School in Bethesda, Maryland. A renaissance man. He's a poet, a painter, a future doctor. And again, he's in on the tackle. Short yardage situation. Nothing there for State. Well, what Michigan State's trying to do, you saw earlier, they ran some of the out routes. Then they, ran, they got the long pass to Burris. So they feel they've got Michigan State on their heels a little bit. Now they've come back with a couple of runs to try and establish that offensive line. So it'll be third down and four for Michigan State. Burke will probably see some sort of a blitz here by Michigan. Bill Burke splits the field. Spartans from hash mark to hash mark. Again, he's looking deep. He's got pressure. Buys some time and now throws in the direction of Richardson incomplete. It almost looked as if Burke could run for the first down. Burke does a nice job of creating some extra time for himself. Gets some pressure, though, at the end. I don't know if he, he took a hard shot at the end of it. The receiver, a nice job of coming back to the ball. But Burke, again, a good job of biding time. And he doesn't want to get out of the pocket to run. He's going to try and look downfield to make the play. But he had already broken containment. It looked like he could have picked up the first down on uh, his own. I believe it was uh, I believe it was Hall who was coming up, and he took a shot right as he threw the ball. So Craig Jarrett will punt it away for Michigan State. Wobbly kick, not particularly long. Marcus Knight will let this one hit, and it'll roll out of bounds at the 36. College football next Saturday, starting at 12 noon. Linebacker LeVar Arrington and the Nittany Lions face the Buckeyes. 19th ranked Ohio State visits number two Penn State. Always a Big Ten showdown in Happy Valley. That's next Saturday at 12 Eastern, right here on ABC Sports. Well, you talked about it earlier, the Big Ten certainly has some standout teams. This year. Seven teams ranked in the top 25, and six of them are playing each other today. Two of them right here, 13 unbeatens in the nation, two of them here at Spartan Stadium. Here's the give to Thomas. Thomas breaks containment, turns it on across the 45, the market at the 48-yard line. Pickup of 12 for Thomas. He needs just 74 yards to go over 2,000 for his career. 18 other running backs, or 17 other running backs, I should say, have done that at Michigan. Good job getting it to the outside. Showed feet with Josh Thornhill, the linebacker, was there. Again, Michigan yet hasn't done anything to make Michigan State stop attacking on their defense. That has to be Michigan's goal to try and back off that state defense a little bit. So it's first down for the Wolverines. Shea in motion and flags fly. State at this point living up to that defensive billing. Boy, it is incredible to me that in the first five games, Michigan State gave up only 214 rushing yards. 42 yards a game. So the motion by Michigan will move them back five. It'll be first down and 15. Ball start, five yards. Well, those will kill you. Michigan. They'll kill a coach anyway. They'll give him gray hair before he walks. 43-yard line. So Tom Brady now. Is it to Thomas again? There's nothing there. Runs right into Josh Shaw and Desmond Thomas. Yesterday I had a great conversation with Lloyd Carr. We, we talked about Tom Brady and what he gives the Wolverines. Of all the qualities he possesses, it's his consistency, uh, whether there's uh, great pressure around him, whether the game situation is pressure, uh, he's consistent. Looking for that consistency now, he has thrown a touchdown pass in every Big Ten game he started. Here he is, with time, into the flats. This is Knight. 
Back to the original line of scrimmage. Ronaldo Hill with the tackle. Ronaldo Hill, one of the top cornerbacks in the league. Six career interceptions, and he would love one here this afternoon. Boy, you're not kidding. Big plays in big games. Good patience by the Michigan State defense at times. Michigan tried to confuse him. And that's something Michigan's going to try and do. I think Michigan overall as a team is more disciplined than Michigan State. They'll try and confuse State on defense. That time, Michigan State just hung back, let the receivers run their routes, catch the ball, and tackle the spot. Michigan has not had a third and short situation yet. Here again, we're faced with third down and nine. Brady has the first down. David Terrell down to the 35. And that ball was a strike. Number one, David Terrell. Amp Campbell on the coverage that time. I believe got turned around right here. He's playing up close. There he turns his back and turns it again. Cornerbacks are not supposed to turn their heads away from the ball. You've got to try and keep visual contact with the quarterback at all times. We saw Todd Howard from Michigan on their defense do that a couple of times, turning his back on the quarterback. You can't do it as a cornerback. You've got to swivel them and turn those hips. Keep an eye on the quarterback. So a gain of 16, and now it's Michigan that spreads the field, and Brady sees something he doesn't like. And I think it was the play clock. They had taken a long time, so he calls timeout. Going to gain no games, you like to waste them, but never in a close one. You like to waste those timeouts. 109 to play in the first quarter. If you're just joining us, Plaxico Burris made a 69-yard catch and run all the way down to the one-yard line. And then T.J. Duckett jammed it in for the touchdown for Michigan State. And that's where we are, 7-0 Spartans. Right now, Michigan State offense is doing what we had talked about at the top of Michigan's offense, doing mixing the plays up, trying to keep the other team off balance. State's done a great job of throwing out routes, running some misdirection, running a bootleg, and that beautiful play to Burris down the middle of the field for the long gainer and the big play. David Terrell just made that huge catch. And last week, got national headlines, played on both sides of the ball. He was a busy man last week. Take a look. This is David Terrell, the 6'3", 208-pound sophomore, made this catch. And as they continued to work against Purdue, he continued to come up with big plays. And then on the double reverse, watch the sophomore here. He takes it, splits the seam, breaks containment, moves the chains, and then takes it all the way down inside the 10 and the touchdown. David Terrell playing on both sides of the ball and already drawing comparisons to Charles Woodson. Well, absolutely. Of the 24 passes and runs that Michigan has of over 20 yards this year, Terrell leads the team with eight of those. Don't think we'll see him on defense today. They did that, of course, because of the passing right. offense that they were playing against. Here's the reverse. This is Walker. And absolutely nobody fooled. Great patience by the Michigan State defense. Taught to keep your responsibilities. Don't try and do too much. That's exactly what Michigan State did. They're not caught out of position when it tries to come back. Everybody's holding their positions and their patience. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to run for Walker. Then they just converge on him. That play, whenever you run that play, a lot of times you don't get a, always a big play, but you're expecting one. Or sometimes you get a couple yards. When you lose yardage, it's a big, big deficit for the offense. Mike, it was a loss of 11. It moves the Wolverines all the way back to the 46. Into the flat, they go to the big fullback, Shea. Gets some of it back. Well, I'll tell you what, they'll give Michigan that all day, Jim. They'll, they'll let them throw those underneath routes. They'll let them use the tight end all day, all they want, especially in a, in a long situation like that. Nick Saban said it this week, to play with confidence, you can't play scared in a game like this. You've got to be aggressive, but you have to be patient. And, and that's exactly what their defense is. It's an attacking defense, but they attack with responsibility and are showing great patience today. Third down and 15 for Michigan. And Terrell has absolutely nothing. Goes to his knees to make the catch. Eric Morris was there defending, but he never had a chance. I'll tell you, that, that's, it's getting to be frustrating for this Michigan offense now. I know it's early, but on third and third and 13, how do you throw a three-yard pass? You can't do that. You've got to stay in the pocket. You've got to throw it down the field. Well, that's the end of the first 15 from East Lansing. 7 0 Michigan State ABC Sports presentation will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations.
in the 20th centuries. From Spartan Stadium in Michigan, we'll try a 56-yard field goal. Hayden Epstein from 56 yards out. All right, we're done here. Long enough, and it's good. 56-yard field goal, and Lloyd Carr smiles as the Wolverines get on the board for the first time this afternoon. Big one for him. He had missed two coming into this game. He definitely had enough foot into this one. Trying to talk it in. <laughs> Using that body English. <laughs> Wait, whatever works, huh? That even brought a smile to Lloyd Carr's face. That's a nice kick and something Michigan needed. Michigan had to get something out of one of these drives. But they worked hard and then the score on a 56-yard field goal. Not exactly the way this game was going to go on their script. Let's go downstairs to Chip Tarkin. What do you have, Chip? All right, thanks so much, Chip. Joining me now is Lorenzo Wright, who's the all-time leading rusher here at Michigan State. You told me this is the first time you've been back since you left. This is awesome. Oh, yeah. And uh, I couldn't have picked a better game to come to. And the excitement here is out of this world. The honorary captain today, would you have liked to suit it up? Oh, I got goosebumps just walking <laughs> through the tailgate. <laughs> <laughs> Lorenzo Wright, Jordan, all the big names show up at the big games back up top. Well, I'll tell you this. I'm with Lorenzo. Look at him. Lorenzo could run, and he was a power runner. They say strength is between your waist, and he had those well, powerful you, legs. Yeah, he had those legs, and he had a great low center of gravity and kept his, kept his shoulder pads nice and low and carried more than a few people a few extra yards. I got those same goosebumps walking across campus as we came to the stadium here this morning. Gary Scott will down this one, and they'll bring it out to the 20. Right now, let's go back to New York. John Saunders, what's happening down in Florida, John? Tim, it's already a wild one in the first quarter. One play after Florida State had grabbed a seven-point lead with a touchdown. Kenny Kelly goes 80 yards to Santana Moss. Makes a couple of guys miss, and then too much speed to the end zone for the touchdown. Kelly, 130 yards passing and two touchdowns, and this game is still in the first quarter with about four minutes to go 14 apiece him we, we called it a track meet it's going to be that way all day i have a feeling we're going to be visiting john saunders in new york a whole lot during this oh game. that's fun thanks john first down michigan state and what that? looking out deep again and plaxico burris could not get up high enough to bring it down and he was open Oh, he absolutely was another timing route throwing the ball before the break but that's about the fourth pass today for burke where he is leaving it hanging again. Again, they're playing off. Turning around again, they're turning around the quarterback. James Whitley this time, they're wide open. Burke's got to put the ball on the mark. Those, those are looking like easy plays for Michigan State. Burke a little off as far as getting a little too much air under his ball. You're exactly right. He does not have to go high on that and let him jump no. for it. He was wide open. Just put it out there for him and let him do his thing. Second down and 10 for State. Pressure comes. Out they go to Burris. He's hit immediately. Todd Howard makes the tackle. Now, Plaxico Burris had a huge week last week. Three touchdowns in the game against Iowa. Watch the big guy work using every bit of his 6'6", 222-pound frame. Working to the inside, working back to the outside on the timing pattern. Burke was sharp, and so was Burris, doing everything he had to do for the three touchdowns against Iowa last week. Those three touchdowns tied a Michigan State record. Big, big day for him. Four receptions already today for 111 yards. And I'm sure he is not done. Third down and five. An interesting time to look for him right now. Go towards Scott, and it goes right through Scott's hands. Todd Howard had good coverage, but Scott should have made that catch. Yeah, that was a good pass by uh, by Burke again. He is the accurate thrower. He throws before the break, but Howard that time keeps his hip square and makes a nice break on the ball and was there. In a big game like this, Mike, this is normally the time of the game where you will see things start to change a little bit. Now emotion has all right. kind of dissipated. First period is over. Now you get into the game plan and you see who's shaking and who's doing what. Right now. It was uh, Michigan State unable to capitalize and move the football on that possession. Here's Craig Jarrett. Short punt. And Marcus Knight will just let it roll. 
And Michigan State will down it at the 37. So just a 38-yard punt. And now Michigan, which just scored on the field goal, will have great field position. Stadium sold out. More than 72,000 here. There are 72,027 seats, and every one of them has somebody sitting in it. Drew Henson comes in now as the quarterback for Michigan. His first appearance. The 6'4", 218-pound sophomore will throw right away. Throws the swing pass. It's behind Thomas. And Michigan State has it covered pretty well. Well, let's take a look at the new quarterback, Drew Henson. Well, Drew Henson, again, the best thing about him, he's, he's fearless, really, in the pocket. But uh, he has a weakness, obviously, of experience. Great mobility. His deal, if he gets out of the pocket, that's when he can really make things happen. Got good accuracy. I'm sure baseball <laughs> helps that. But what Michigan State will try and do is get in his face quickly, make him think quickly, make quick decisions. Because he's inexperienced, that could be, that'll, that'll be a weakness for him. Well, Henson has a gun. He's a third baseman. Signed a million-dollar contract with the New York Yankees, and here he gives it to Thomas. You know, this is not new. They alternate Tom Brady and Drew Henson, and it's something both quarterbacks accepted. As a matter of fact, we talked to Tom Brady about it yesterday. Going into our sixth game now, so uh, I'm starting to get more comfortable with it. It's, uh, I think it's a, it's a great asset to our offense um, to have two quarterbacks who are capable of playing in there. And, uh, you know, our, my expectation going in there uh, as a quarterback is to go out and play well, and, and Drew's is the same. So both quarterbacks say that they, they've gotten used to it now, six games in. But Tom Brady, who was uh, just on fire last week, had a terrific game. You know, it's got to hurt him to come out of a game like this when he was just feeling like he was getting in his rhythm. You know, and, and that quarterbacks can say whatever they need to in sound bites, and Brady is 6 of 11 as he left the game for just 44 yards, not very many yards per completion. But football players want to play. And they want to be in the game. They don't want to come out of the game. They like to build a little momentum. And I know they agree to this and say they like it, but I'm sure if either one of them had their brothers, they'd be out there for the whole game. Well, T.J. Turner was shaken up, so he comes out. Mike Austin comes in at linebacker for Michigan State. Third down and long for Henson. He's got it complete. This is David Terrell, and Terrell's down to the 35-yard line. By Michigan good, good job by Terrell. He finding the spot just past the linebackers underneath the safety in front of Amp Campbell, the cornerback. Good throw by Henson. No doubt he has the stronger arm of the two, and he just guns it out there perfectly. Gain of 22. Terrell's third catch, and Henson comes in and goes two for two. Terrell now goes out. Diallo Johnson replaces him. First down, Michigan. Here's Thomas banging straight ahead. And even though Michigan is not gaining a lot of yards on the ground, they have to keep doing it. They can't go away from that game plan. They have to keep trying to pound Michigan State. That's going to open up that passing game. Which at this point, Drew Henson, I know he's only been in there a very, very short time, but hey, he's moving the team, and that's the bottom line right now. Second down and seven. Thomas now, six carries, 22 yards. Hanson's got pressure and throws it away. Intentional ground, and there's a flag. Oh, Robert Smith came through cleanly. And the Playboy All-American caused the intentional grounding. Absolutely the right call. In the pocket, just trying to get rid of the ball as Robert Smith is right in his face. Robert Smith not fooled, not going for the fake. Again, keeping his responsibility. Doesn't leave his feet, just gets his hands up. Very nice job. No receivers in sight. The only one around there is offensive linemen. And last time I checked, they're not eligible to even touch the ball. That's a penalty. It's a good call. So intentional grounding is a loss of down. Robert Smith against Illinois was a monster with an interception, a fumble recovery, two sacks. He's all Big Ten. He's got eight tackles for losses and comes up with the big play here. A loss of 16 and a loss of down. You see a lot of trust on this defense. The guys on the other side of the field not going for the fakes. They're staying home. Third down and 24. Backside pressure. Henson throws a knuckleball incomplete. Wow. Just when you thought the momentum was changing to Michigan, 
Here come the Spartans. Well, and they did what they had to. They get in Drew Henson's face. Tom Brady, I think, would be able to handle that a little better because of his experience standing in there making the throw. Henson, I think, will look at the rush a little more than Brady will. He doesn't look like a happy camper. Gary Scott will be standing at his own 15, awaiting the punt of Corey Sargent. There's a look at Scott. He's dangerous. Gary Scott, the career punt return yardage leader. This is a high punt. Scott calls for a fair catch and takes it at the 15. So, with 11-29 report in the first half, it's still 7-3. And third-ranked Michigan trails Michigan State 7-3. to three. Tim Brandt, Mike Golick, Chip Tarkin with you. And East Lansing. It's first down for the Spartans. Baker in motion. And this is Clemens. Clemens has a hold. Breaks containment out to the 35 to 36-yard line. Lord Clemens with a huge, huge run. A gain of 21. Great block by Dupe Peco, number 74, the left tackle. He starts out high, and then he goes low. Good job here. Watch him go high, and then watch him cut at the end. Great job of taking out the legs of the defender, setting him up high and going low. Again, this offensive line's not going to blow you off the ball. They'll position themselves and either stay on you or take you out low. Lloyd Clemens, three 100-yard games this year. He already has 38. First down, Michigan State. Play action, Burke with time, has a receiver, it's Burris. Plaxico Burris out close to another first down, it'll be about a yard short, Todd Howard on the tackle. That's five catches now for Plaxico Burris. The Aflac trivia question, who holds the Michigan State record for most all-purpose yards and total touchdowns? We'll have the answer for you coming up. I know my partner Mike Golick knows it. Oh, I absolutely know it. But you know what? For the listeners and the fans out there, I won't give it away and tell <laughs> the answer. I'll just, I'll just let everybody at home go ahead and think about that one for a while. <laughs> I'm looking next door. All the trustees at Michigan State shaking their heads. I'm not sure they have the answer. Second down and short. Clemens first down across midfield in the Michigan territory. Tackle made by Gold. Let's go back to New York now, John Saunders. Sam will keep it in the Big Ten. Wisconsin against Minnesota. Minnesota yet to lose this year. Ron Dane, though, around the left side. Three yards. Ties the game at seven apiece. Ron Dane, ten carries for 37 yards. Back to you, Tim. Ron Dane, he's a load. He is a big guy. You know, I... I I watched that Rose Bowl. It looked like the UCLA defensive backs were actually afraid to make tackles on him. Hit him, hang on, and wait for your teammates. First down, Michigan State. Almost intercepted. Scott on a little. He's telling him now, get it up a little bit higher. Yeah, really, the, the only incompletions have, have, have really been more on Burke than on anything else. He's had open receivers, and Burke has missed them close to a handful of times. Still telling him to get it up. You know, I, I have to believe that Burris and Scott are both so confident. They think if that ball is anywhere near them, they're going to make the catch. And also, they Today's walk in the huddle, and I'm sure tell their quarterback that, hey, I'm open throwing with the ball, and the quarterback can probably really take so much of that. But you're right. I mean, they, they haven't even stopped down the Michigan Michigan State. Yet, especially Burris. Keep attacking them until Michigan tries to attack on defense. Michigan State spreads the field on second down and long. And intentional grounding on Burke this time. The Honey Jones came with the pressure. He had a lot of white jerseys with him. And immediately they threw the flag. Well, you know, Burke's got to make an attempt to at least throw at the feet of a running back or a receiver. Instead of just into the ground. Here's the Honey Jones. Here's that again. They're, they're picking up. He's got his time back there. Then he runs out. It breaks down at the end. Just throws it into the ground. Now, Nick Saban says, wait a minute. Now, there's a there's a receiver there in the area. And he says, the rule says, if there's a receiver in the area, 
And it certainly was. Not intentional. Juan Moss was right there. <laughs> Referee may have called that on intent of it throwing it into the ground, but still, that is the rule. If the receiver is anywhere near the ball, it's not grounded. Third, Third down, down and 24. Wow. Two or three white jerseys came across. We'll see if they were drawn. First was Renus, and then Grady Brooks came after that. I always say the closest man to the ball has got to watch the ball. Easier said than done for a nose tackle. Rob Renus is an All American clogger, and I don't mean dancer. For all you uh, weightlifters at home, imagine slapping 275 pounds on the bench press and then try and put it up 30 times. That's what he does. Right of the staff, outside defense. Five and it is against Renus. Remains third down. Well, you know, he's playing against a 6'7", 300-pound guy. He's 6'1", 290. So you got strength against strength. He's a fifth-year senior. He's trying to play some games and work some leverage now on, on Jensen. And I think he was trying to just anticipate the count. Oh, absolutely, and they always say you're right over the ball watching, but it's tough. You get caught up in the count just as well, just, just like all the other defenders do. Third down and 19. Watch the hands! Watch the hands! Burke is thrown for Burris. Incomplete. The ball hit the ground first. We talked about arm strength. We talked about it at the top. This is actually about a 25-yard pass, and Burke just flat out didn't get it there. Under threw him. Ball does hit the ground. It's a trap. That's a good call. Short hop. But Burris had to come back a couple of yards for it. Burke didn't have the arm strength on that one to get it out there. So Craig Jarrett on again to punt. He's been out quite a bit this first half. And he's kicking to Marcus Knight, who's standing at the 15. High snap. Good punt. Knight at the 17. Tries to get the wall and doesn't even come close. A 41-yard punt, a loss of one. Mario Suggs made the tackle. A great play by Suggs. Great job getting downfield. He was actually getting blocked when he made the tackle. It'll come for you right, trying to get a block on him. Plays right through it, wraps and tackles. Well, college football coming up next. Purdue and Ohio State. Big Ten action continues. You'll see number 15, Purdue. Number 19, Ohio State. As high as the candidate, Drew Brees. And the Boilermakers take on the Buckeyes in a Big Ten showdown. That's coming up next right here on ABC Sports. What a day in this conference. Seven teams ranked in the top 25, six of them playing each other today. First down, Michigan. Henson throws quickly. Gets it out to Terrell, and he picks up five. Drew Henson's pass complete to number one. Michigan State, we've talked about how great that defense is. Look at all those punts. They got that one field goal, and I'll tell you what, when they went into film the next day or after that game, I guarantee you the Michigan State defense was angry over that one field goal. <laughs> they didn't want it there. I'm sure they wanted the clean slate of all punts or turnovers. T.J. Turner is back in the ball game on defense for Michigan State. He's been shaken up. He's back in the ball game now. So they bring in a junior with experience. Backside screen. This is Shea. And Shea is caught from behind by Nick Myers, short of the first down. This defense runs so well, Tim. Julian Peterson first puts the pressure. Then the linebacker, Thornhill, he almost makes the play. He holds up the running back, and then Myers runs it. You can see the, the pressure first from the outside. And then after the pressure, he gets it off. It is a misdirection play. Thornhill's right there, number 50. Makes some stutter, and there's Myers to clean up. Great teamwork on defense. Michigan has had eight runs for nine yards in this game. That's it. They've been able to move it with the pass, and that's what they're going to do here on third down. Almost intercepted. Amp Campbell broke on the ball and almost made the pick. What neither Henson, and I don't think Brady does it as well, but Henson certainly does it, is throw it on the break. You watch him and see the breaks. He's standing, and the ball's not there. You've got to throw that ball. It's got to be out. You're giving the quarterback, in this case, Amp Campbell, time to break on the ball. And I'll tell you what, Amp's got to be a little disappointed himself. That was to the house. 
Sargent gets off a high spiraling punt. Scott will go all the way back to the 22 yard line. Inside the 20 at the 19. A 53 yard punt. A loss of three on the return. It's still a 7 3 ball game. Seven three Michigan State, a defensive battle, pretty much what we expected. Terrific ball game here at East Lansing. Tension, anxiety, you can feel it all in the stadium today. There's a big time championship feeling. TJ Duckett is the ball carrier. Right now, let's take you back to New York and John Saunders updating us on Florida, huh, John? Well, Tim, you know it's been a tough week at Florida State, but things are getting even tougher on the football field. Kenny Kelly here floats it to the end zone. Santana Moss, his second touchdown reception of the game, covers 14 yards. Kelly has three touchdown passes, 13 of 15 for 196 yards and the lead. In the Big Ten, Minnesota now has grabbed the lead again over Wisconsin. Tim, back to you. The battle in Florida, Miami, Florida State. Big Ten battles, great football all over the country today. Ed, watch that. Burks going deep, looking for Burris. He's got a step. Plexico Burris has the catch. All the way down to the 30-yard line. He got off to a slow start this year, had an injured thumb, came into this game with 22 catches. That's a 49-yard game. Again, Burris just out running the quarterback, and then the safety's got to be over the top better than that. Number 15, Dwayne Patman, has got to be there. Burris is past him. The safety in a two-deep can't let anybody get by him. He's got to be the center, center fielder, and Patman gets caught out of position. Burris at 6'6", 225, is out running the smaller, faster defensive player. All week, coaches said he has that 1,000-yard stare. He was in the zone. He now has six catches, 169 yards. Here we go again. This is complete to Ivory McCoy. Right now, let's take you downstairs. Here's Chip Tarkington. All right, thanks, Timmy. We, I'll just talk to Lorenzo White, who's a former Michigan State guy. He's a former Michigan guy. John Jansen, who's playing on Sundays now with the Washington Redskins offensive tackle. You would like to be back, and you played in this game last year. Oh, yeah, this is one of the best games in college football, and, uh, you know, it hurts the first time around not to be out there with my best buddies and, uh, and, and, and battling out with them, but they're out there doing a good job. Yeah, they may sit you up at halftime. They may need you for the second half. Uh, anytime. All right, Timmy. Second down and four, I'll tell you this, John's having a heck of a fall in Washington. <laughs> Lemons close to a first down, will be about two yards short, but John Jansen steps in as a rookie. He's been the most consistent lineman with the Washington Redskins, who, by the way, have turned things around. Oh, great off North Turner. Right. You know, they've got only that one loss to Dallas, and they continue to get better, and he's the guy on the offensive line that has really made a difference. Biggest difference uh, when you go from the College to the pro ranks as Jansen now faces great players every single week. He's got speedy, fast, and strong players. And so far, as a rookie, he is really up to the task. Big play here for Michigan State. It's third down and one. Burke looking into the flats, incomplete. You go for it on fourth. You know, I think Michigan State's going to want to get some points, some more points on the board. You know, here's a case, as you said it before about Burke running this one. I think Billy Burke should have run the ball. He could have got that first down. He tried to put the pass in there and good coverage on defense. And, yeah, I think Michigan State, I think you want to grab all the points you can get. In a game as close as this, another big play either way could really break it. So you want to get as many points as you can on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the field. This will be a 39-yard attempt for Paul Ediger. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is good. So the Spartans are on the board again and extend their lead to 10-3 over the Wolverines. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Ford Outfitters. No boundaries by Burger King. When you have it your way, it just tastes better. By Aflac, without it, no insurance is complete. And by Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Michigan State, the well, Michigan State, good control again. They're doing what, what Michigan had done so well, and that was balance. Runs up the middle, counter plays to the outside, then sticking the short pass and throwing in 
the occasional big play. Michigan State really taking a page out of that Michigan offense and having great control of the ball and the clock. Well, you're looking at ground zero, Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan. This is the game that everybody's talked about in this part of the country for a long time. Lloyd Carr, Nick Saban, Michigan, Michigan State, 5-0, 5-0, 2-0 in the conference, both of them. This is a game, as we said, that has ramifications not only here in the state of Michigan, but beyond the Big Ten and certainly the Bowl Championship Absolutely. Series. This is Anthony Thomas to return the kickoff. And Thomas gets back to the 17-yard line. Well, the Aflac trivia question, who holds the Michigan State record for most all-purpose yards and total touchdowns? Go ahead and give it to us. Lorenzo White, I bet. The answer is, hey, 5,152 yards and 43 touchdowns for Lorenzo White. And the Rose Bowl win. What do I get for the right answer? He's going to ride to the airport, and that's it. <laughs> wow, I wouldn't have answered if I didn't think I was going to get anything. <laughs> Well, let's see what Michigan do now and can do now with its offensive series. First down for the Wolverines. They load up for Thomas. Thomas picks up two. Michigan State's defense has just been relentless, has not given Michigan any room to run. Almost looks like they have more players on defense than Michigan has on offense, but again, you can't can't get away from your game plan. This is Michigan's game plan. They're going to stick with it. Still a lot of time left to go in this game. And just one touchdown down. You can't throw the game plan out and just start passing the ball. I, I, I have no problem still. I know the Michigan fans are probably saying, why aren't they throwing more? They've got to still stick with that game plan. Thomas averages 97 yards a game. He's got seven carries for just 24 yards here. They go with the screen. Thomas hit immediately. He'll lose two yards. Morris did a great job of filling up on the play again. It's another little screen pass. You're gonna, he's going to get a little pressure. They're letting him in. Lyman out there trying to block a cornerback. That's David Brandt, the center out there. He can't get over to Morris fast enough. Again, attacking, attacking, attacking defense. They're beating the offense to their blocks. Third down and nine for Michigan. Knight, 6'1", 180 pounds, senior, 81 yards. Jeff Delbert on for the extra point, and it's good. 3.39 to play in the first half, and we are tied at 10. Big play for Michigan today. When I say big play, 20 yards or more, only the second one for them. They had 11 last week in their victory. Wolverines unable to move the ball on the ground today, so they go to the air and they complete the big touchdown pass, and we're now tied at 10. Haygood would feel this one. It's a short kick, he takes it at the 12. Breaks one, Haygood's loose. Out to the 40 to 45 yard line. Finally stopped there by Dwayne Powderman after a 33-yard return. Well, let's take a look at this touchdown and what happens. Here's the two deep. These guys can't get beat, and the Knight splits them right down the middle. These guys have got to hang back. They are the last line of defense. This runs right by him. Bad mistake by the safeties. That time Richard Newsom. And again, this arm strength 
of Drew Henson getting the ball out there. And Michigan State been playing well all game long and then one play now. Nick Saban's got to get to that defense on the sideline. Forget about it. The best thing about a defensive player is a short First memory. Ten, Forget Michigan about that play. Say you've been stuffing them the whole game. They got one lucky play. We'll take care of that one. You guys just do what you've been doing. Well, Nick told us yesterday they fully expect Michigan to score. They said the game would go back and forth all day. He said patience and persistence will make the difference here. This pass is complete to Scott. This pass complete to number 86, Gary Scott. That's Scott's first catch. Scott stopped by number five. James, James Whitley, Whitley makes the tackle. Michigan. Approaching the three-minute mark. Now it's, it's up to Michigan State to do what they've been doing the last couple of series. They drives, last one led to a field goal. You start to use the clock, staying within your game plan. But you absolutely you want to start to burn it a little bit and take some time off. Well, certainly Michigan State has great field position here now. It'll be second down and six. Second down and six MSU. At the Spartan 49. Herb Haygood with that great return of 33 yards has put Michigan State in excellent field position that they didn't take advantage of. Here they go again to the big tight end, McCoy. Ivory McCoy still on his feet. McCoy all the way down to the 26. A pickup of 26 before Tommy Hendrick can wrestle him down. Again, yeah, nice play right in the middle of the field. You see there, he's just going to find a little hole right there. Good pass again, right as he's turning. That's the key to these plays. Burke's throwing the ball before the break or right on the break. These receivers and tight ends know as soon as they turn their head, get your hands up, know the ball is going to be there. That is Billy Burke's main strong point. Ivory McCoy came into the game with eight catches, and seven of those eight have been for first downs. He's got another one here, his second catch of the afternoon. Burke again. Incomplete. It was again intended for Bill Chris Burst Baker. Pass intended for number 83. Well, skating coming up tomorrow on ABC. World silver medalist and U.S. champion Michelle Kwan faces world champion Russia's Maria Butraskaya in the Kerry Lotion Figure Skating Classic. USA against Russia tomorrow at 4 Eastern, 3 Pacific on ABC Sports. When's the last time you tried a triple south count? Oh, it's been a long time. Has it? All right. Billy Burke now 11 of 22 for 214 yards. Faced here with second down and 10. Lemons did everything he could to get back to the line of scrimmage. You might get a yard. Williams and Renus had great penetration and made the tackle. You know, we talk about Michigan State's run defense, the best in the country. Well, Michigan's run defense is second in the Big Ten, right behind Michigan State. They're just giving up 96 yards a game, and a lot of it starts with that man. Right in the middle, Rob Renus loves to make penetration, and if he doesn't make the play, he will force the back to go east and west before he can start running north and south. 135 remaining in the half. You see the timeouts remaining. Michigan has two. Michigan State has three timeouts. Third down and call it 10. Michigan shows blitz. Burke steps up, good penetration, and incomplete. No flags. James Whitley got there. The crowd wanted pass interference. Well, first Burke, a nice job. We talked about at the top, patience in the blitz. Knows his guys are going to pick up the, the uh, blocks. Steps up in the pocket. This is a close one here. Did he get there before the ball got there? Crowd says yes. Well, Paul Ettinger comes back on to try to make it from 39 yards out. He missed from 49 earlier. This has plenty of distance, and it's good. Officially a 43-yard field goal. And so with 117 remaining in the first half, the Spartans take the lead again by three. A lot of football happening all over the country. Let's take you back to New York and John Saunders. Michigan State moving the ball 29 yards in five plays in three minutes, 27 seconds. Scoring on a third. All right, John, what a day of college football. Terrific games Absolutely. everywhere. Well, let's see if this was interference or not. Again, can't hit the receiver until the ball gets there. Scott's going to.
find the hole right in the middle here, and you're going to see right at the end of the plate as you get hit before the ball gets there. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Look very, very close. You know what? And, and on a close play, I'm inclined to let it go. It did look like he got there a little before, but if it's almost, if you have to look that much at slow motion to see, then you know at real speed to the referee, it may have looked like perfect timing. It looked to me like there was no question it was pass interference, but Scott sh still should have made the catch. Absolutely. This kickoff goes out of the end zone, and so Michigan will have it at the 20. Paul Ettinger has that adrenaline flow, and I mean, he really kicked that one. Touchback, Reminder coming up on the Valvoline Halftime 99, John Saunders and Terry Bowden with score scores and highlights from all over the country. And you just heard that update from John. So many great games going on right now. Terry's visit with Purdue quarterback Drew Brees as he makes his run at the Heisman. And certainly we'll have a lot more on the Peter Warwick situation and what the latest is there with Florida State. Big last possession by Michigan State, Tim. After Michigan scores on a big play, State goes down and puts more points on the board. That's answering the bell. Well, Michigan has 116 to, to play with here in the half. Flags fly. It looks like flag day here at East Lansing. Well, you got two timeouts, a buck 16 to go, and you're on a 20 yard line. The question do you go down and you try and score? I think absolutely you have to try and move down the field. Well, the, the last thing you want are mistakes like that that hurt yourself. Well, what, a lot of times what will happen on the first play, I think that first play was going to be a run. The they run it and they see. One seventeen. Put more put one time 17. on the clock, right. so they put another second up. It's one seventeen remaining in the half. They were going to run to see just how much yards they gained to see what kind of an offense they were going to go into. Now they need to force the pass right off the bat or come back with that same running play again. First down and 15 for Michigan. Thomas touched his knee and actually lost a yard. T.J. Turner's going to get credit for the tackle, but his knee went down behind the line of scrimmage, so they push him back another yard. Well, how about Michigan State here? They got three timeouts left. I'll tell you what, I almost think about burning the timeout here, stopping to get the ball back in good field position. I think it's a good call. You're relying on that defense. You've got the number one uh, rush defense in the country playing very, very well today. Only one big play they've given up. I got to believe it. if Michigan doesn't gain a lot of yards on this play, they will use one of their timeouts. I think I would have used one already. Well, you're down to 42 seconds, and the clock continues to move. Down to 33 seconds. Thomas loses another yard. And timeout is finally taken with 21 seconds left. I think Michigan State wasted themselves a good 35 to 40 seconds by not using, using that first timeout. Timeout, Michigan State, their first. 21 seconds remain in the half. We'll be back. partner Mike Golick here is challenging the time management of Michigan State absolutely what what an offense does in the situation Michigan was in they they do use a run play to test how many yards are going to get whether they're going to go for some throws or not they got stuffed at the line of scrimmage at that point you have to remember that Michigan is going to probably just try and run it you see what state does against the run and it's been up to the task today and even better so Michigan State trying to think a step ahead in that chess match is you have to realize they're probably going to try and run the clock out. Like I said, I think they wasted 35 to 40 seconds on calling that timeout. All right, 21 seconds left, third down and 16 for the Wolverines. This is Henson with time, looking deep for Terrell overthrown, and it was a lot of contact, but no flags. So that'll bring up a situation where Michigan State's going to get the ball back. 
Unfortunately, they're going to get it back with probably under 10 seconds to go. Time for maybe a play to get in some field goal range. And that'll be it. He's punting from the goal line. So Michigan State's going to get good field position if they get any kind of return. It's a high punt. And Scott Fair catches it at the 36. So a 44-yard punt, no return. And 11 seconds remain for Michigan State. They've got two timeouts could possibly with 11 seconds get Sergeant two plays in move it down the if you're going to have to gain good 20 30 yards to get in field goal range or you take your shot with your 6 6 receiver and your 6 1 receiver down the field good call there just let him go run under it see what what happens plus the way Michigan is beginning burn I'd be surprised if they are looking for an interference call as well First down, 10, State. 11 seconds remain in what has been just a terrific Ball game defensively on both sides has been well played. First down for the Spartans. Watch the hands! Watch the hands, man! Incomplete intended for Baker. I don't know about that call because Ivory McCoy was down to 30 and he had a couple of steps. Yeah, what they were trying to do is clear out and throw the under now, underneath route, get out of bounds and save some time, but you're right, McCoy was down the field. I'd go ahead now for the Hail Mary. Yeah, and, and Burke doesn't have the arm strength to get it too close to the end zone so you got to hope for a tip or an interference call which would give him the ball down down close seven ticks remain down in distance here mean nothing you gotta watch is at the bottom of your screen that's plaxico burris he's six foot six too much time Nick may just Nick Saban may just want to get to the locker room now. Yeah, just take a knee now. <laughs> Prior to the final, we'll start, we'll start on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Timer, please put seven seconds on the clock. Seven seconds. So that'll take it back to uh, 11 seconds. Well, now they, oh, they, no, they're not adding seven seconds. They're just taking the clock back, back to, to seven, seven seconds. seconds. So they're adding one second to it. They just took Herb Haygood out, though, a wide receiver, and put McCoy back in. Please put seven seconds on the clock. One of the tight ends. So you got to wonder if they're going to try the long play down the field. Six huh. catches, 169 yards, 28-yard average. That's a career high, that 169 yards. Second down, 15. He's at the two. top of your screen. Black, Blacksico Burris. And I think they're going to run this one out. Oh, watch the heads, guys. Flags fly everywhere. It's going to be holding against Michigan State as the first half comes to an end, but it can't end on the penalty. Flags we'll see who everywhere. the penalty's on. Holding, holding. On the offense, penalty is refused. That's the end of the half. Yeah, everybody wants to go to halftime. Just let him go. <laughs> Wasn't a defensive penalty, so the half can end. The penalties declined. Now the officials are holding up Michigan State. They don't want them to go into the tunnel the same time as Michigan. So Michigan State will have to cool its heels. Here's Chip. Thanks, uh, Timmy. Coach Saban, important your team came back after it was a tied. You got the field. Well, that's a big three points. Well, it was unfortunate that we gave up the big play, but Michigan's got good skill guys, and uh, we were playing man-to-man, -man and they made a big play on us. But I was glad to see our team come back and respond to that, get back on the board. So now it's going to be important for us to play for 60 minutes. Overall, first half, are you pleased? Well, I thought we controlled the game except for the big play. I think we got to be a little bit more consistent offensively. I think we didn't throw the ball as crisply and sharply as we could. And I think we're going to need to do that in this half. Okay, thanks. Good luck the next time. All right, back up top to Tim. A terrific first half. The Spartans leading the Wolverines 13 to 10. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Michigan 13 to 10. We'll show you how they got there. Tremendous first half played here. Started out after a big pass to Burris. T.J. Duckett from one yard out. It was 7-0 State. All right, we're done here. And Michigan got on the board this 56-yard field goal by Epstein, but State hey, comes right back. Hey, Mike that Bullock. That was a big, big thing there. Answering the bell after the field goal score. Get one of your own. Marcus Knight.
makes this catch from Henson. An 81-yard touchdown for Michigan. And, folks, we were tied at 10. But then Ediger from 43 yards out gave Michigan State the lead again at 13-10, and that's where we are. Again, that last field goal after that long play by Michigan, Michigan State comes right back and answers it. Let's go down to Chip Tarkington. Chip. Coach, are you going to start Henson to start the second half? Uh, yes. What did you tell your team at halftime? Well, I told them uh, our offensive line has got to do a much better job uh, getting some movement up front so that we can establish some balance. We're not running the football. When you can't run the football, you got a hard time. Okay, good luck in the second half. Thank you, Coach. Back up to top, Timmy. All right, Chip, thanks so much. The obvious problem with an offensive line that has not been able to run the football at all against Michigan State's defense. Oh, absolutely. When, when you can't run, what the Michigan State defense does, or any defense for that matter, is you pin your ears back a little bit. What normally might be a bit of a run defensive stance, you change, you put that foot back a little farther, put your shoulders a little lower, and try and, and blow into the backfield. Interesting, they are going to start Henson the second half. What that tells me is Michigan wants to and needs to get the ball downfield a little more other than that long pass and one other long one uh, to Terrell down the field. They were all passes, short passes to the outside. They need to take it downfield more. What a job Lloyd Carr has done in Michigan since the start of the 97 season. Michigan has won 27 of 30 games. Nobody, nobody in the country has won more. Tennessee and Florida State are also 27 and 3, but nobody has won more. And everybody remembers that 1997 12-0 national title team at Michigan. Meanwhile, Michigan State has uh, played very, very well here this afternoon, ranked 11th in the country and leading the third-ranked Wolverines by three. So Paul Ettinger set off the kickoff. Anthony Thomas is deep for Michigan. Thomas will field this one on the run at the 10. Breaks one, breaks two. Out to the 40-yard line before he's finally knocked out of bounds by the pursuit of Michigan State. But a terrific return by Thomas, and Michigan will start with fine field position after that 31-yard return. We heard Lloyd Carr say that that offensive line for Michigan has got to protect better, and that definitely the key because Henson, not as experienced in the pocket as Brady is. He needs a little more time to check out the coverage. He wasn't real talkative when Chip asked him if he was going with Henson. He just said yes. Got to get the ball downfield, and Henson's got a stronger arm. He's, I'm sure, really got into his offensive line and said, if this kid's going to be our quarterback, we've got to give him time. First down, Wolverines. Hands! Hands! Henson's going to throw Watch right away. They escape ability you talked about earlier, and he loses two yards. Tracked down from behind by Julian Peterson. By Michigan State's Julian Peterson. Take a look at the Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter. Half, first half stats. Well, a couple of keys right there. Ten yards rushing. This is a big one here. Remember the tight game. We got no turnovers yet. That could be huge plays in the game. The team, how about this, the team that has uh, 29 of the last 30 victories has gone to the team with the most rushing yards. Neither one of them at 10 yards and only 48 for Michigan State really setting it on fire on the ground. Second down and long. This is Thomas. Picks up one. Again, Eric Morris made the tackle, the co-captain on defense, the leading tackler. He's having a great year. Two-time Big Ten Player of the Week. And what Michigan State does so well is they get everybody to the ball. They work on pursuit drills during the year. You see the initial hit, then another guy, two, three more there. But Eric Morris, the strong safety in most our offensive structures are not counted for to be blocked. So if you have a good, tough, strong safety like to do with Eric Morris, you get big plays. Third down and nine for Michigan, and it's almost picked off. Richard Newsom had his hands on the ball and couldn't hold on. Oh, you talk about your opportunities for a big play. There was one there for Newsom for a big play. He was just hanging out in the middle of the field. He's just going to hang back. Here he is right in the middle. He had man coverage on a back, but as soon as the back blocked, he just dropped off and stayed right in the vision of the quarterback. Good, smart play. Corey Sargent gets some pressure on the punt, and it goes off the side of his foot. Scott will field it at the 22, and he looks for help. Scott out to the 33, so a 36-yard punt, 11-yard return, and now Michigan State will have pretty good field position to start the second half. He's looking for... Oh, Plaxico Burris, look at this. 
This was the big gainer that set up T.J. Duckett's one-yard touchdown to start the game, and then he came back again. Boy, he did a great job of turning around the defensive backs. And the interesting thing here, Tim, with his statistics and his catches and yards, they have not taken advantage yet of the size factor. I mean, he's done it as a flat-out wide receiver. They haven't even gone to the fact that he's 6'6 six, six to try and get him to out-jump defenders yet. Well, Nick Saban said they needed seven yards of fifth, I mean, seven plays of 15 or more yards, and they've got five of them, and three of them are by Burris. Straight ahead they go. Clemens is hit by Arenas. So we're talking yeah. about, yeah. 15 plus. They've got five of them ready. Nick Saban's magic number was seven. Mr. Burris there with three of those big plays. He is having a monster day, and they should continue to go with him. Again, they'll try and ram it up the middle like that on the first place to go to play action to try and get it to this man. 169 yards a today already. 28-yard average every time he's catching the ball. Well, second down and seven. They'll be looking for him here. Plenty of time for Burke. He's looking for Burris. Burris has a step and makes the catch. All the way down to the 25-yard line. Plaxico Burris just going up over top of Howard and Patman to make the, the, the catch. This is the first time that he used his size. Dwayne Patman, the free safety, has got to jump again. No jam at the line, but watch Patman come in at the end. He's got to jump for the ball. Patman's getting beat again. He's the safety. He needs to be behind the play and actually coming forward toward Burris. He's getting beat. And then Burris is jumping, and that's a huge advantage. And no jam. It starts at the line, though, Tim. Todd Howard has got to jam him at the line. A gain of 39. It's a good block. That's a good block. And so Nick Saban said they had to get seven of those big plays. Now they have six. <laughs> and Burris up to four of them. Again, the run up the middle. You've got to jam him. He's just turning and running. He's giving a free release. He doesn't hit full stride until later in the play, but I can't say enough about having the free safety. You have got that half of the field. You have got to stay back and almost come forward and jump for the play. Well, I'll tell you this. Already this season, Michigan's defense stopped the powerful running game of Wisconsin. Stopped an option against Notre Dame, Syracuse, and Rice, and a possession passing of Purdue. Today, they're What's facing okay? the whole package. And here, Burke can't get away. James Hall will get credit for the sack. Loss of 11. Good job by Michigan, the big play there, blitz up the middle. And this Michigan defense, this is what the, a lot of different type of offenses, they've seen them all, but none today is balanced as Michigan State's. That's the difference. It's always been one major thing from those teams, from the, the running, the option, or the passing offense. Michigan State's giving them their toughest test on both run and pass. Third down and 20. Watch the heads! Here's Scott. Scott gets some of it back. Down to the 26. Let's get you back to New York, and John Saunders will update you on what's happening around the country. Tim, if you're near the top of the polls, it's been a struggle here in your Burger King update. Penn State against Iowa. Randy Reiners, 40 yards to Rob Tyne, who takes it for the touchdown. So Penn State's lead is just seven now, 14-7. Florida State's in a tie, and Michigan is losing. All right, John, okay, here, hey. Edinger trying another field goal. This is for 44 yards, and this one is no good. The kick is not good. So Paul Edinger misses. And the score remains 13 to 10. State's opportunity. Now Paul Edinger, their, their field goal kicking, Edinger was 10 for 10 coming in today. He's two for four. So he struggled just a little bit. And he missed again and set up this for Michigan. And, and I think it was a good move. What Michigan State wanted to do, you can either went deep to Burris but what they did is decide to go short and get in better field goal range for Edinger, and he just missed it. I tell you, someone needs to get over to him and tell him, listen, there's a lot of game left. Usually leave the kickers alone before a big kick, but now he's got to get his head back in the game because they may need him later. It's a 13-10 game. It could come down to his foot at the end. Well, he's had a terrific career, 22 of 26. As we said, 10 for 10 coming into this game. We're good. But today, just 2 of 4. Now, 
I will say this, they were long field goal attempts, so he shouldn't feel that badly, and he still may be needed to win this game. 10-38 remaining third period, and the flags fly. Michigan State called a timeout. Michigan had a couple extra guys in the huddle, tried to run them off. Michigan State tried that the substitution. Michigan State was caught with too many men on the field. Side judge picked Michigan up his State. flag, and a timeout was called before the penalty. 10.38 in the third period. Timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. Games will come to an end this weekend. But that doesn't mean you have to leave the worldwide leader in sports at home. Because the news, interviews, and analysis from your favorite ESPN personalities continues all day, every day, on over 600 radio stations nationwide. Check your local listings to find the ESPN radio station near you. ESPN Radio. Take it with you. Subscribers to ESPN the magazine, like Marcus Camby, really look forward to each issue. Where's my magazine? Get 26 issues for just a dollar an issue, and this windbreaker is free. It's wind and water resistant with an embroidered ESPN the magazine logo. Hey man, that's my ESPN the magazine. Go order your own. Call now for ESPN the magazine and free windbreaker. Sunday. There's nothing more exciting than two David Kelly shows back to back. First, the press calls these private eyes a Sunday night treat. Snoops, then. The guy who stabbed me might still be out there. The episode you've been waiting for. There's some psycho targeting us. The one that will answer all your questions. He's come into this office and I can smell him. The Emmy winning practice right after Snoops, ABC Sunday starting at 9, 8 central. See the time remaining in the third quarter, 13 to 10. Michigan State holding on to a slim lead here. Terrific ball game, been played strong defensively on both sides. Big plays have certainly made a difference thus far. Second down and 10, and here's the quarterback draw. And absolutely nothing there for Henson. Robert Smith trying to rip inside. That's a nice, nice block by Backus. Smith not too happy about it. Felt he got thrown down. Good block. Robert Smith, Playboy All-America, 6'5", 278. Eight tackles for losses, four sacks, 18 career sacks. And having another fine, aggressive game here this afternoon. Third down in a long nine. And Henson can't escape. And there he is again, Robert Smith. T.J. Turner got there first. Smith finished him off a loss of 11. Well, Lloyd Carr said it. Right at the, coming out in the third quarter, the offensive line has got to protect. It's the blitz. Turner gets the pressure first. Robert just keeps fighting, just keeps fighting. Gets a nice push off the face mask of Hutchinson and holds on for the sack. High wobbly kick. Gary Scott will take it at the 45. Whoa, and Scott is drilled at midfield. Oh, my. Wow. I mean, Eric Wilson just tattooed him. 39-yard punt, five-yard return, and there is a flag. Flag on the play. And it's going to be against Michigan well, State. Offsetting, personal foul both ways. And a against Michigan as well, you're right. It's one of those no harm, no foul, we let them both go. Let's continue to play. I know that tackle was a great one. It sure was. That and was a slobber knocker. There's nothing like running full speed and getting a shot at somebody. <laughs> those feel good. That'll rattle your fillings and put your eyes in your forehead. Yeah, that'll wake everybody up. Dead ball, up. personal foul on the kicking team. Dead ball, personal foul on the receiving team. They cancel. So Michigan State will have terrific field position here, starting in Michigan territory at the 49. And again, until they find an answer to stopping Burris, Michigan State needs to keep going to. But again, they're doing they're doing the job of mixing it up, running, running up the middle, 
keep Michigan State aware of that run and then run a great play action. David Terrell now goes to defense. They put him on Plaxico Burris to see if they can stop him. And there they are right there. First down, Michigan State. All right, all right, Clements. all right. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Number 36. So Lloyd, Lloyd Carr now makes State. a move to slow down Plaxico Burris. I talk about jamming Burris at the line of scrimmage, so Terrell tries it. Look at Burris. Oh, what a nice job. And then oh. goes after him. That's a smart play by Burris. I'll tell you what, that's the first time somebody challenged Burris all day, and he said, you know what, you want to challenge me, I'm going to punch you right in the face and hit you after that. That's a smart play by Burris. Here they are again on second down and 10 at the bottom of your screen. Here's the matchup here again. And they're going to Burris. He's got the catch. To the 31 yard line. Plexico Burris makes his end, eighth catch of the day. No doubt it's in your mind when you just get shoved to the ground and then buried. And that's what Burris did to Terrell. Now let's watch. Does Terrell turn his back? This is what they've been doing all day. He does. He turns his head to the quarterback. Howard had done that. Now Terrell, as a quarterback, you cannot turn your head to the quarterback. You lose sight of it. Burris wide open. Made that one look easy. Hey, I talked to him about that. Well, Terrell back to the sideline. That was a, a tough afternoon in two plays. First down, Michigan State. Clements, big hole. Down inside the 25 to the 22-yard line goes Lloyd Clements. We talked about the tight end Chris Bank earlier and the different things he is going to do. Number 83 right here, come up and make the block on Dahani Jones. Takes him out of the play, nobody there to fill. He keeps his legs going and drives Jones back. Normally, DeHane Jones has been driving the blocker backwards. That time, Chris Baker got the better of it, opened up the hole. He's the most versatile player, I think, on this offense, playing tight end, playing h flag and playing fullback, kind of like the Washington Redskins used to do. A pickup of nine, and right now, Michigan State starting to out-physical the physical Michigan team. Clemens again, first down. Down to the 15. While we have a chance, let's go back to New York. Check on the Penn State-Iowa game with John. Tim, we told you that Penn State was in a struggle leading by just a touchdown against Iowa. Well, they pounce on this one. Good opportunity for Eric McCoo. Finds a hole and then shows great speed down the sideline. 47 yards it covers for the touchdown. And a little breathing room for Penn State, although it's still more than it should be, 21 to 7. For more, go to the Bowl Championship Series online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. All right, John, thanks for Michigan State. It's first down, and here's the pitch again to Clemens. Breaks two tackles and fights hard to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, Michigan had that one smelled out, actually made nice plays. No gain on the play. Again, the Michigan defense is doing very well themselves this year, but as you said, Michigan State has just been taking, taking it to them more. And boy, oh boy, there's Burris going off the sideline injured. That's something you do not want to see. Hurt his shoulder. In that play, he would be blocking downfield, a running play. Ivory McCoy comes in and takes his place. Now two tight ends for Michigan State. Burris out with a bad shoulder, eight catches, 225 yards, a career high for him. Second down and nine for the Spartans. Burke throws to the corner. He's looking for Richardson. Incomplete. Good coverage that time by Todd Howard. That was very good coverage by Todd Howard. Burke tried to throw it to the outside. You see it go outside and high. That's where he wants to put it, making the receiver turn. Howard this time doesn't turn his back on the quarterback. Shifts his hip, keeps his head either on the receiver or on the quarterback. Makes a nice play on the ball. Billy Burke is now 14 of 28, 278 yards. And it'll bring up a long third nine. Now Lloyd Clemens is being worked on in the sidelines. He too is banged up. Play, is, play was blown dead, and Renas came through and took a shot anyway. 
I'm not sure he heard the whistle, but the crowd heard it and they thought it was a cheap shot. Yeah, sometimes the whistle is going to come from side judge or back judge if you see something and you don't hear it right away. Plus, you always want to, you know, take those hits out of court back when you can. Plus, the fact that Rob Renis is so focused, oh, absolutely. he's in such a zone, I guarantee you he never heard that whistle. And, and if he did, he, he blocked it out for a moment. <laughs> he is a technician. I mean, he breaks down film. He studies opponents' strengths and weaknesses. As you mentioned earlier, he's a former wrestler. He's all academic. He's a very smart kid. Yep, and I really think the wrestling part of that helps so much because wrestling is a leverage sport, and even though he's the strongest player on the team, I'm sure he'll be the first to tell you you'd rather use leverage on the field than strength most of the time. So it'll be third down and 14. Burke has time, looks into Scott. Scott's got the catch. Touchdown, Spartans. The whole stadium's rocking. That'll get you going. And all day we've seen Burke, even on completion, Tim, under throw a ball a little bit. This time it works to their advantage. The ball under thrown a bit, receiver comes back for it, does Gary Scott for the touchdown. 19 yard touchdown, Burke to Scott. Edinger is in now for the extra point attempt, and he splits the sticks. Michigan State 20, Wolverines 10. Great Scott. The Spartans have the lead. Underthrowing the, the balls all day, even completions, and this time it results in a touchdown. Todd Howard, the cornerback, is running right with the play. We're going to freeze it right here. See, the ball's underthrown. He comes back for the ball. Howard's right with him, but it's underthrown. Scott sees it first, turns and comes back for it, and it's a touchdown. Howard's got to be thinking, geez, I cover the guy perfectly, and they still score. Edinger's kick will take Thomas to the three. Across the 20, and Thomas is out to the 25-yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Dodge. Do not follow, do not conform, be different. By Applebee's, you belong at Applebee's. Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. And by Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service. Michigan certainly not used to this situation being 5 and 0. Well, the third ranked Wolverines are being tested this afternoon. Down 10 with 6.06 to play in the third quarter. Drew Henson still the quarterback. Feels the pressure, bails out, and picks up two yards. Let's go back downstairs to Chip Tarkington. All right, thanks, Timmy. Plexico burns their tough nerve and next one side of the neck because they were moving both arms trying to determine exactly what happened and how it happened. But they're calling it a pinch nerve right now. He's up walking around. Don't be shocked if he goes back in the game. Here's a guy who really wants to play today and who's having a great day. Well, and I'll tell you this, he's approaching the all-time record set by Andre Risen. 252 is the record. He's got 225 today. Second down and long, and Henson's got company. He escapes the first wave, but again, Robert Smith takes him down. Three sacks by the Michigan State defense this afternoon. T.J. Turner got there first. Smith will get credit for the sack. Well, two things going on here. Michigan, number one, not picking up the blitz. And number two, Michigan State's in a position. Anthony Thomas, they're just out of position, just diving at the guy. Michigan just looks like they're not going through the motion, but they're not getting in front of people. Whenever you see offensive people diving for the block, they're not moving their feet enough. Michigan's not blocking well enough, and Michigan State is now up 20 to 10, and they have been for the last few series, pinning their ears back and just rushing the passer. Third down and 18, it's deafening in here. Hanson steps up in the pocket, reloads. Has it picked off. Eric Morris inside the 20 to the 17 yard line.
decision you make when you have two quarterbacks. Floyd Carr deciding to go quarterback with a strong arm. He's getting jittery feet. He's been sacked a lot. He's stepping up. He's trying to force a pass now. Before he'd been scrambling to run. That time he wanted to hang in the pocket and make a pass. Inexperience comes in there. Doesn't see it enough of the defenders. Locks in on that receiver. Sees him locking in on the receiver. Makes the easy pick. Can't look at one receiver. Plaxico Burris back in the ball game. He's going to be at the top of your screen. First down, Michigan State. This is Clemens. Clemens to the 15. Well, right now, Michigan State just, just feeling their own. They're coming off the ball now, playing more smash mouth football when that's not what they're normally accustomed to. They've got the adrenaline going right now. Michigan's going to have to try and pump it up on defense. Boy, Carr, you have to wonder if he's going to go back to Tom Brady now after that interception. And that's the problem you run into when you, when you have two quarterbacks. It can be good, but it can be bad. All week long, Nick Saban's been saying, survive the script. Once Michigan goes through its plays, we'll have them felt out, then we just play our game. Here it is now. Second down again, it's Clemens to the 15. You know, we talked about everybody from a lot of the same high schools playing in this game. As a matter of fact, we talked to Eric Morris about it. He says, sure, I know these guys. Me and Gold and uh, Eric Wilson, you know, some of the guys, the Corey Sargent, some of the guys I played in an all-star game with up here um, back when we came out of high school. So, I mean, I got some friends on that team, but, I mean, we'll still be friends after the game, but right now we're the enemies. Right now they're enemies, and I mean they're going after each other. This is a flat-out war right now. Well, they were losing the play clock. It's a second time out now that they've thrown away for that. That could be a critical error. Absolutely. Nick Saban does not want timeouts lost when they may need them down the stretch. You know, one thing he told us as well as told my kids, he said, don't look at the scoreboard. I don't want to look at the scoreboard. It's a 60-minute game. Stay within the game plan. Each series one at a time. Don't get caught up now that it's 20 to 10. That absolutely right could hurt them at the end of the game with one timeout left. But he's got these guys focused. He said that would be the big thing. Was Michigan State maybe making too big of a thing out of this game? Well, Nick Saban told us yesterday this is going to be a four-quarter war. Our team this year has has been a four-quarter team, and we've actually been behind in a couple games, and you know come back and and won it in the second half. So, uh, with that idea in mind, and the idea of making it a 60-minute game, uh, I think we can build confidence by having some success early in the game. But I also think that our team needs to be relentless and fearless in the way they play the game for 60 minutes. Well, I think they've been to that way thus far in the game. Absolutely. This has to be a huge emotional lift for them. The way they're holding the lead now, ready to head into the fourth quarter. And Tom Brady on the sideline warming up. I think that's a good move. The walls are starting to crumble around. You need an experienced man at the helm. Meanwhile, it's third down and long for Michigan State. To the corner. Burris, touchdown, Spartans. of his life. Uh, Todd Howard and James Whitley, the cornerback, both of them went for the one right here. You're going to see them both go down to the bottom receiver. They both break off, and there's Burris wide open in the end zone. Coverage mistake, easy touchdown. Third-ranked Michigan right now just being riddled. Edinger on for the extra point. It's good, and with 3.02 left in the third quarter, it's Michigan State 27 and Michigan 10. Look at this. That is an unbelievable game. Again, Michigan tried one time this game, Tim, to jam him off the line, and that was that was on a running play. Finally, someone got in his face, and David Terrell and Burris put that person on his back. I still think that's a, that's a big mistake for Michigan today, is not jam, trying to jam him on the line. 
Well, college football continues tonight on ESPN. Coming up at 7 o'clock tonight on ESPN, it's the Georgia Bulldogs traveling to Tennessee to take on the Volunteers. Georgia led by quarterback and potential SEC Offensive Player of the Year, Quincy Carter. Tennessee, of course, the defending NCAA football champion trying to stay in the hunt. Led by quarterback T. Martin and running back Jamal Lewis. That's tonight on ESPN. Still plenty of time <laughs> left in this game. The parties better not begin yet. No, not just yet. There's still plenty of time. Brady's going to come back at the helm again. I think that's a good move. But Michigan, they're going to get the ball just 149 yards in total offense. And remember, 81 came on one play to that touchdown. Blaxico Burris now in on kick coverage. <laughs> He's doing it all. Well, Michigan's going to go with the time-tested veteran, the senior, Tom Brady. Edinger's kick never leaves the ground, and it'll be down for a touchback. Anthony Thomas takes a knee. He'll bring it out to the 20. Tim, I just see it a little bit. It just seems like a little bit the wind is coming out of the sails of Michigan. Not a lot of hustle for that ball. It was on, you tell by the little things. That ball is bouncing around on the ground. Nobody's making a huge effort to go after the ball, pick it up, and make some positive yards. They let it roll right into the end zone. See, I disagree with you, partner. I don't think Michigan's feeling any panic. I, I think this is an experienced <laughs> club. I really do. I think they're going down with their co-captain, their senior. We'll see if he can get a drive going here. This is, is a third good move. this is a good move, definitely, going back to Tom Brady here. First down, Wolverines. Brady, incomplete, looking for a flag, there is none. Terrific play by Ronaldo Hill over the back of David Durrell. That is a great play by Ronaldo Hill. Watch, watch Ronaldo Hill's left arm. That's a, the arm you get in trouble with. Does it touch? No, that's a good play. That's a good play by Hill. A lot of times that off arm, he goes to block with the right arm. It's that left arm coming over the top. He kept it on the small of Terrell's back. That's a good defensive play. I will say this is a critical drive for the Wolverines. Second down, they go to Thomas. Haven't had any success running today. Thomas has carried the ball 11 times, and he has 28 yards. Smith. And Michigan State just all over the play. Robert Smith was there on the outside. But when Thomas started to break to the outside, there's the cornerback, Ronaldo Hill, again. Disciplined defense in an attacking style. Everybody takes care of their responsibility. Folks, you are watching the nation's top rushing defense, and right now they're excelling. Third down and long for Michigan. David Terrell with a catch out to the 35-yard line. It's a first down Michigan. That's five catches for Terrell, and he'll move the chains. Let me tell you, Nick Myers just absolutely laid out Tom Brady. First, let's take a look at Terrell. Good move to the inside. Campbell caught, not shifting his hips quick enough, coming the other way. What I tell you what, you want to see Tom Brady, see tough taking a hit? Nick Myers just absolutely tattooed him. You dream for a shot like that as a D lineman. Brady stayed down for a minute, but he's right back up leading this team. Tom Brady, very, very tough quarterback. Brady now with first down. Looking deep, throwing deep. Looking for Knight and overthrowing. College football next Saturday at 12 noon. Linebacker LeVar Arrington and the Nittany Lions face the Buckeyes. So it's 19th ranked Ohio State visiting Penn State. It is a Big Ten showdown in Happy Valley. That's next Saturday, 12 Eastern on ABC Sports. Big Ten football this year, seven teams in the top 25. And the way this game is going may take a bit of a turn, though there is plenty, plenty of time left. Second down, they need 10. They get five. Marquise Walker after the 41-yard line. Good play. Walker's first catch. Good play. Positive yards. But again, Michigan State, even when Michigan's getting receptions, they're right on them. There's no that they don't yak stack yards after the catch. Outside of the 81-yard touchdown we ran after he caught the ball. As soon as these receivers are catching the ball, the state defenders are right on them. Third down and a long four.
from the shotgun. Again, it's to Walker, and they've got another first down into Michigan State territory. So the Wolverines showing a lot of poise and coming back now and moving the football. That's where Tom Brady is key coming. And look at the blitz coming. Great job of picking up the blitz, but he stands in there. Drew Henson took a few sacks, may have had some happy feet there looking to escape. Brady stands in there, they pick up the blitz, and he throws a strike. First down and 10 for Michigan. It's marked at the 48. Wolverines need something big, and they need it now. That's a good block. Thomas to the 45-yard line. Anthony Thomas has had to work for every single yard today. He needed 74 coming into the game to go over 2,000 for his career. He now has 33 yards, and every one of them has been tough. And you see, as the third quarter is under a minute to go, down by 17, they still try to run the ball every now and then, still trying to keep that balance that may help down the road with a play-action pass. Second down, six, Wolverines. 59 seconds remain in the third quarter. Second down and long. That's a good block. They're going deep. Almost picked off again by Morris. They were looking for Knight, but he was covered. Dangerous pass by Tom Brady. Boy, it sure was. Safety Brady coming over the top, almost making the interception. Good job again by the Michigan picking up the blitz. That time it was Aaron Shea. Brady had the time. But again, well covered. That's almost the third interception he's had today. He's only got one, but he had his hands on three of them. Eric Morris doing a nice job coming over and timing the jump. Third down and five. Throw to the outside of Terrell. Great coverage out there by Campbell. Soup was all over it. That's what's talking about Michigan State again. Even when they're playing off the receivers, they're not playing off that far. They'll let him have the catch. He knows, Campbell knows he's got five yards to give. He'll let him make the one yard reception. He's sure of himself making the tackle, and it's no gain, and now it's fourth down. What a great story. His courage has been well documented. Amp Campbell, tragic spinal injury versus Oregon last year, fought back this year against Oregon, had an 85 yard touchdown return of the fumble. Very inspirational. Fourth down, and Michigan's going for it. They need five. They've got it. Marcus Knight picks up the first, down to the 35. So they gamble, almost force their hand to gamble, and they succeed. And, they, and they, that was the first fourth down conversion they've made this year. Just a nice, easy little slant pass. Just get the first down. It was going to be a corner blitz. That opened up the slot receiver for the slant. Well, we're down to the final 15 minutes. That's the end of the third quarter. We'll continue after this message and word from our ABC stations. 140 yards and a touchdown today, a career high, 12 yards short of the all-time Michigan State record. That was set by Andre Risen. Tom Brady throws this one away. He was looking down the right side for David Terrell, who was covered very well, so he throws it away to the opposite side. Absolutely. They, they tried to the hitch and go. Am Campbell was covering David Terrell. Am Campbell had none of it stayed with him on the go route. This is unfamiliar territory for Michigan. This is the first time all year they've trailed going into the fourth quarter. Their number three ranking being tested here by Michigan State. This is a critical drive, obviously, with 14.55 left in the ball game and down 17. Second down and 10. Brady throws it, has it complete to Shea. Shea's inside the 10 to the 5 to the 3 yard line. Aaron Shea had beaten Newsom and rambles down inside the 5. Amp Campbell and Josh Thornhill were the closest. There's the linebacker, Thornhill. He goes out on him on coverage and runs in to Amp Campbell. As he's trying to cover, you see him looking back. 
He had Shea in man coverage, but ran into Amp, Amp Campbell and the receiver. It took a bad angle to him. Got a great mark. Looked like his knee hit at the five, but they put it at the two. Michigan goes to its jumbo package. Thomas. Down close. Still no signal. <laughs> he just got buried in humanity. And the ref. Touchdown, I, I, Michigan. <laughs> Anthony Thomas with a touchdown, and Michigan comes up in a critical drive with a touchdown. They had to get some points there. Being down 17, they had to at least get a field goal. Touchdown, no doubt, better than that. White Carr again bringing in Tom Brady. I think it was a good move to lead him down the field. And Anthony Thomas, what a great run there. He just churned his legs. Freeze couldn't even make a decision because he got buried, but he had crossed the goal line and an injured Michigan State player coming off the field. Desmond Thomas came into the ball game with a sore knee. He's been playing with a flat tire most of this season. He's got a chronic knee ailment, and now obviously it's hurting him even more. So Desmond Thomas, the 6'3", 300 pounder, being helped off the field. Jeff Del Byrne comes on to attempt the extra point. Got to count on your big players to make big plays. And in that time play, it was a big series, and that was Tom Brady coming back in the game. Calming that offense down a little bit, showing some leadership. And okay. the extra point is good. So in a critical drive, at a critical time, Michigan does what no team has been able to do this year. That's for a rushing touchdown against the number one run defense in the country. Off, it's a 10-point game with 14-23 to play. Michigan has just scored the first rushing touchdown against Michigan State this year. This is Herb Haygood. Haygood is out to the 24-yard line. What kind of intensity in this game? Watch this. Watch the outside man here, Ronaldo Hill, after he missed the block. Watch the kicker. This is the extra point. Look at this. What? It, what? And then he runs. <laughs> You, know, you, you wonder why people say they don't like kickers. You know, when they say the lineman, what, what, what was that? You, you tap them on the button, run. <laughs> wow. So Bill Burke brings the offense out. First down, Spartans. <laughs> Clemens, nothing. Lloyd Clemens. <laughs> Kind of waiting for a hole to develop and nothing ever opened up. Near the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And beginning this year, Chevrolet will also donate two $1,000 high school scholarships to the high schools of those that we select. 1340 still to play in the ball game. This is complete to Baker. Baker still on his feet to the 45-yard line. Michigan State using its tight ends, Chris Baker and Ivory McCoy, with great success today. That's a pickup of 21. And again, using the play action going out there. Remember, Burke's a left-hander, so he rolls away. He can throw. Good pass. Again, accuracy right on the money. Give your man a chance to run the ball. This Michigan defense has got to step up, uh, Tim, in the second half. They haven't stopped Michigan State yet. Michigan State got position for a field goal, though they did miss it, and then they scored two touchdowns. Michigan has got to step up. Michigan normally is a smash mouth end of whistle group. They try to chase, change the pace of the game, but so far Michigan State has dominated and controlled the tempo. Tackle made by Dahani Jones. Well, 13-15 remaining in the ball game, and this has been some kind of game. 13 to 10 at the half, Michigan State led. In the second half, actually in the third quarter, the Spartans took control. Scott had a 19-yard touchdown pass from Burke. Burris is, uh, he had a 15-yard touchdown pass from Burke, and it was 27 to 10. Then on a critical, critical drive for Michigan, they just got Anthony Thomas to score on a two-yard run, the first rushing touchdown against Michigan State this year. That's where we are, 27-17. Watch those hands! Second down and long. Burke has time and throws it complete to Gary. Gary Scott down inside the 20, 
to the 17 yard line actually stepped out on the 19 Gary Scott with a big catch and another first down for Michigan State what a great job of Scott he ran the route past the linebackers and underneath the safety Burke had time and he just waited for him you see did you see him show up in behind the linebackers and in front of the safety there he is waits for him to clear that linebacker right on the money great route running and great throw Pick up of 35, and again, the Spartans are challenging. There is no fear in Michigan State today. Burke, again, avoids the rush. No flags. Boy, there was a lot of contact in the corner. Ian Gold came on the blitz, got a lot of pressure on Burke, and he just sidestepped it. Again, up. that's the first time we've seen him try to put a little pressure on Burris. Runs with him. Does Whitley. It's a, it's a good play. Good defensive play. The first time we've seen today a quarterback try and stay with Burris, at least give some inkling that he wants to hit him on the line of scrimmage. 18 catches or 18 completions rather and 33 attempts today for Burke. 368 yards and two touchdowns. Here comes the pressure again on Burke. And there is a flag down. That was a free play. It's gonna be a flag on the play. Leave offsides on Michigan. It was a free play for him for Michigan State. Still have 12 minutes and 30 seconds in this game and it has been a physical game from the beginning. This is going to be against the Wolverines. Offside. Defense. Defense. Five yards Five penalty. penalty. Replace. Second down. Well, the Applebee's game fact. Michigan State record for most rushing yards in a game. Lorenzo White, 185 yards. That was against Michigan in 1987. I tell you, Lorenzo White, we certainly have him in the, in the game a lot for not playing. The Aflac question he was. Second down by Spartans. Up there again. Well, this game has been everything it was built up to be. Both clubs 2 0 in the conference, both 5 0, both highly ranked. Here goes Moss. Moss inside the five, still on his feet. Touchdown to Juan Moss, the fullback for Michigan State. Just a red shirt freshman, Juan Moss, who scored on his very first career carry for 42 yards out, scores here from 14. And let's give credit where it should go to the big uglies up front, Dave Sikora, number 70, the left guard pulled, and he cleared the way for Moss on that touchdown run. Believe me, they don't get too mad when I call them big uglies. They know, they know that's what they're called. <laughs> Extra point is good, and the Michigan Wolverines just look shocked. Folks, right now, it's all Spartans, 34 to 17. Since this afternoon, 34-17 is the lead over Michigan. 12-19 still left in the ball game, And Wolverine fans just clinging to hope and watching the clock. This will be taken by Thomas at the four. Anthony Thomas across the 20 to the 22 yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. The Olive Garden, when you're here, your family. FedEx, FedEx, be absolutely sure. And by the United States Army Reserve, be all you can be. Give the big guy some credit right here. Dave Sikora, the left guard, watch him pull. Not only does he do a nice job blocking, he stays on his feet. He doesn't throw himself so he can continue the block and open the way for Moss in the touchdown. Good job by the big man. First down for Brady in Michigan. Out to Thomas. Thomas breaks one, still on his feet to the 29-yard line. So Anthony Thomas using all of his talent. There they are. The big guys. Offset. We number one. Number 70 there. There's the man that put the block. 
never get enough credit. Always get the criticism, never get enough credit, so we'll give it to him. The key there is he stayed on his feet. A lot of big guys in space will throw their bodies low. He stayed up, drove them out, and opened up the hole even more. Great job. Clock management now becomes paramount for Michigan. Thomas to the 31-yard line. The clock continues to move. You're right. We talked about staying within that game plan, keeping the ball running, but there has to be a little more sense of urgency. If they want to do it, they need to get the plays in a little quicker. They need to get back to the huddle a little quicker. They need to save five or ten seconds each time they break the huddle. Ball's put back in play. 25-second clock starts to tick. And we're under 11 minutes to play. Third down and a long two for Michigan. David Terrell has one on one out there. He's got the first down. Not the prettiest pass from Brady, but he got the job done. This is why Michigan State's winning the ball game. I mean, they're stopping him. I know that time Michigan just wanted to get two yards. But Michigan State is right there. They're one big play they've given up today. Only one that beat him deep. Other than that, they've been staying in front of the receivers, doing a good job. First down, Michigan. Most points Michigan has ever given up to a team is the 22 points in Notre Dame, 34. No time left. First down for Brady. Gets good protection this time and gets it out to Shea. The big guy rambles out to the 45, gets out of bounds, and they stop the clock with 10-19 left. Amp Campbell will get credit for the tackle. Again, they've got to hurry. They've got to get in the huddle. Five or ten seconds each time. they got to jog it back to the huddle. They don't have to go no hurry yet, but they've got to save at least five or ten seconds per huddle. Get in and out. Get the play. Save some time. And Michigan State can't play back. They, they're winning this game because they've had an aggressive defense. You always see it when they're winning a game, start to back off. Michigan State can't afford to do that. Well, by Shea getting out of bounds, it stopped the clock at 10-19. Out of the shotgun. Over the middle they go. They've got to complete tonight. Knight still on his feet and gets out of bounds inside the 30, and that'll stop the clock with 10-10 left. So the play only took nine seconds, a gain of 26. And we're seeing something Michigan hadn't done all game, the ball getting down the field. Brady's got time to throw, trust his blockers, takes a little hit at the end, but going down the field. And now, one of the few times the receiver got some yards after the catch. Michigan just hoping it's not too little too late. Well, and again, it looked like he was down in bounds. They said he got out, so they stopped the clock. First down, Wolverines. This is complete to Coleman. Forward progress at the 25. Eric Morris makes the tackle. Let's go get an update on the Florida State-Miami game from John Saunders. John? Well, Tim, the Seminoles starting to assert themselves now in the fourth quarter. Travis Miner ends a long drive, punching this one across from two yards out. Makes it a 31-21 lead for Florida State, although... Miami was marching. Wisconsin and Minnesota are tied at 17 apiece with about 30 plus seconds to go. We'll keep you up to date, Tim. Wow. Meanwhile, here is 34-17. Michigan State, 9-13 to play. Brady trying to rally the Wolverines. This is complete. Out in the corner. Clock will continue to roll. Walker didn't get out of bounds this time. Again, only four or five yard gain. The ball stays inbound, so the clock keeps running. Under nine minutes to play. Michigan State's got to keep the pressure now. They need to mix in a blitz or two here to, to get in Tom Brady's face. I'm sure they're worried about not giving up the big play for the touchdown, but don't. First down, and 8.20 left to play, but still down 34-17. It is critical they score quickly and then have to make some stops defensively, which they've been unable to do. Wolverines spread the field. The setbacks are Thomas and Shea. Pump fake going to the corner. To, Terrell is open. Touchdown, Michigan. David Terrell with his ninth catch. A 19-yard scoring strike. Tom Brady to David Terrell. 
Well, that was a fake slant, and Cedric Henry, the quarterback, got sucked in. And I watch him here break in on the slant. He breaks for it. Terrell goes right outside, makes it an easy touchdown. Henry bit on the slant. Terrell, nice job of making the fake. Good job by Tom Brady with the pump fake, making Henry think it was going to be the slant. Okay. Jeff Del Byrne splits the sticks. And it's 34 23 Michigan State. But here come the Wolverines. David Terrell with the touchdown. Sir Tom Jackson tries integrating real life experiences into his curriculum. So now, when his students write about a blitzing defense, they'll use stronger words like hemorrhage. I was honorable mention all district when I was in high school. Uh, I got runner up at a church oratorical contest. I'm driven, and I think I could be the best teaching assistant you guys have ever had. I I'll carry your pom poms. In the 20th century, sports captured our imaginations. From Babe Ruth to Johnny Unitas, from Muhammad Ali to Michael Jordan. Now they're all together in one book, ESPN Sports Century, chronicling the greatest athletes and the biggest moments. It's the definitive book on sports in the 20th century. A must for sports fans of every generation. ESPN Sports Century, available at bookstores now. It's a 10-point game with still 8 minutes and 11 seconds to play. On that last drive for Michigan, Brady was 8 of 8, 75 yards. Just perfect on that drive that took 13 plays, 80 yards, and 3 minutes and 43 seconds. That is a great drive, and unfortunately for Michigan, even what a great drive it was, they can't afford two more drives like that. They're going to have to be a lot shorter. Tom Brady was perfect. Let's go, Green! Okay, good at the three. Hey, good still on the speed of the 25. This has been a physical game, and it's been a game that Plaxico Burris has just stepped up and excelled in. Watch this. Well, you talk about catching the ball. What about blocking? Look at his hands. All That's right, punching right, with your right. hands. That's how you're taught to block. Don't block with your body, block with your hands. Punching and driving his legs. A great physical play. I tell you who's noticing that. Those guys that play on Sundays, those scouts, they love that stuff. Plaxico Burris has really been impressive. Nine catches, 240 yards, 27 yards a catch, and a touchdown today. He but, reminds me so much of Randy Moss. But I tell you what, he already does better than Randy Moss. He gets downfield and he blocks. I love a complete player like that that'll sell it out for the team. Well, and with that size, he's a mismatch guy. First down state. Again, they go to Baker. Baker, the tight end, breaks the tackle and takes it out to the 34-yard line. Again, the rollout to the left because it's a left-handed quarterback. Good play gives him time, so even though he has pressure, he can get rid of the ball. I want you to notice what Baker does right here. Watch him. Watch him cut back inside. Why? You keep that clock running. That's a smart play. Bill Burke, 374 yards today. Did you see a school record? Straight up the middle they go. And that running play is doing exactly what they want to do, and that's melt the clock. Down to 7-13 remaining in the ball game. First down, so they'll stop the clock just long enough to move the chains. And everybody here in Spartan Stadium knows exactly what's taking place. I understand what Michigan State is doing to a Michigan defense that is ranked 22nd in the nation. 
they are running the ball and passing the ball on this team, mostly passing, but really still mixing in a good running game and have already put 34 on. Burke just All right, we're done. takes it down on a broken play. Clock continues to move. Coming up next year on ABC, you will see 15th ranked Purdue at number 19 Ohio State as Heisman candidate Drew Brees and the Boilermakers take on the Buckeyes in a Big Ten showdown. That's coming up next right here on ABC Sports. We'll take you game by game all the way to the Bowl Championship Series and eventually the National Championship game at the Sugar Bowl right here on ABC Sports. Coming up next, Purdue and Ohio State. Another great Big Ten matchup, something we've been talking about all day. Well, they're breaking the huddle with nine seconds going to play clock. They're going to have to get up there and do a quick snap to get it off. Well, they're going under the six-minute mark of the game clock. Snapped it with one. Gary Scott out in Michigan territory, up to the 46-yard line anyway. Dwayne Patman made the tackle, and that's five for Gary Scott now. Guys starting to build on their statistics, his fifth catch of the game. Good job, though, getting it down to third and three. That really opens up your playbook. They didn't try a little two-yard pass just to keep the clock running. They were still an attacking offense. Take a big chunk, make it third and three. Now you can run your play action. You can run your boot. There's a lot more things you can do off third and three than, say, third or seven and eight. This drive right here is a Michigan killer. Third down and short for Burke. It's back to the 45. Gary Scott saying, I'm wide open over here, and he doesn't even look. <laughs> also a reminder that if time permits, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. That's the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report with John Saunders and Terry Bowden. Well, under five minutes to play. There's timeout on the field. Still a 10-point ball game. We'll take a timeout as well. We'll be back. It's the biggest night in sports. After game one of the series, Mike Tyson returns. Live on Showtime, Mike Tyson versus Orlando Norris Jr. Sunday, there's nothing more exciting than two David Kelly shows back to back. First, the press calls these private eyes a Sunday night treat. Snoops, then. The guy who stabbed me might still be out there. The episode you've been waiting for. There's some psycho targeting us. The one that will answer all your questions. He's come into this office and I can smell him. The Emmy winning practice right after Snoop's ABC Sunday starting at 9, 8 central. A 10-point game, Michigan State starting to feel it, though, as the clock is down to five minutes to play. David Terrell now comes back into the ball game. And Marcus Knight will be standing at the 15 to field the first Michigan State punt of the second half. Oh, it's a high tail wagon. And Knight will take it all the way back at the two into the end zone. Marcus Knight fielded it inside the 10. And they'll mark it at the four. A 52-yard punt and a two-yard return. You know, there's decisions to make. Try to make a big play over common sense. I think this was the wrong decision. You're taught as a punt returner. Your heels never go past the 10-yard line. If it's going over your head, you let it bounce into the end zone. Probably either lost sense of where he was on the field or just trying to make a big play. 
Should have let that ball go, take it on the 20-yard line. Well, they always say, even in Little League, don't field a punt inside the 10. And I do understand sometimes guys will want to make a big play, but I actually think he kind of got lost on the field because it was such a good punt. Didn't realize that he was on the goal line when he made the catch. Well, with 4.48 to play, Michigan's in a 10-point hole. Brady has it complete to Walker, but his knee touched at the six. So Walker has his fourth catch. They move it out, give Brady a little bit of room to work with. Down to four and a half minutes. This ball is complete. And this is, certainly isn't going to do it. I mean, they're underthrown balls, making the receiver come back. They're down as soon as they catch him. Diallo Johnson is out to the 13. He had to get to the 14 for the first, so they need another yard. <laughs> David Terrell. Oh, that's got to get out of bounds. David Terrell has the first down. That'll stop the clock as they, they move the, the chain. Change, and then it'll start again. You got to save every second you can get. Defending for Michigan State. Trying to in and out. There he is, right by the sidelines here. You know, you see the defender. Get out of bounds. You got the first down. Get out of bounds. Try and burn him on the next play. Chain now set. Michigan snaps it immediately. Brady going deep, and he's looking for Walker. Walker is into Michigan State territory. Clock stops again at 3.48. Cedric Henry on the coverage again. An underthrown ball. Henry stride for stride. The ball's underthrown. The receiver looks back first, sees it's underthrown first, so he's able to adjust to it before the defensive back. Gain of 38 yards, and the Wolverines are back on the ball. Brady. As it complete to Johnson, who steps out of bounds, just about the 40-yard line. And again, Michigan State trying to play back, let them have the catches in front of them and make the tackle. But I think Michigan State's got to mix in some of the plays that put them in this position. Get up, play that press, get in the receiver's face a little bit, and bump them. Still plenty of time here. Michigan scores, makes it a three-point game. We've got 3.43 to play. Tom Brady certainly make the most of his opportunity coming back in the game. Second down and four. Again to Walker. Maybe a yard. Let's go downstairs to Chip Tarkington. Well, Tim, the Michigan sideline of all of a sudden, they have caught fire. Everybody is standing up. Nobody is sitting along the bench. They think they can still win this football game, and the sideline is doing everything they can to keep the guys on the field high strung. Third down for Brady. Looks to the outside, incomplete. It was intended for Diallo Johnson. A lot of contact, offensively and defensively, no flags. Yeah, when they're both bumping, you got to let that go, let them play ball. Oh, fourth down. Again, just an out pass. Big Brady threw it a little late after the break. Good job by Campbell breaking on the ball. Folks, this is the ball game here. Fourth down and three. Michigan doesn't get it, it's over. First down, Michigan. That is the second fourth down conversion of the afternoon for Michigan, and it couldn't have come at a better time. So they move the chains, still 3-11, and the Wolverines are moving. And again, they came into the game not having converted a, a fourth down yet to this point. Nice play. Michigan State did try the blitz that time. Brady had to get rid of a click quick, and he threw a strike. Tom Brady has just been sensational in the last two Michigan drives. Here comes the pressure. He's hit from behind. That's an incompleted pass. Ronaldo Hill, the cornerback, came on a blitz, and Brady never saw him. Hill, Hill came on the blitz, and Morris came on the blitz. They came from both sides. He's going to take the hit on your left, though. You'll see nobody touching Ronaldo Hill. Aaron Shea, the fullback, had to go to his right, where Eric Morris was blitzing. You had one man pick up two blitzers. 
Doesn't work. There you go. He's picking up that man while the blitzer comes from the other side as well. Coming with a blitz again off the corners. This time they beat it. Shea had one man to beat, but he's got the first down. So they'll stop the clock again with 2.58 to play. A gain of 12. Smart play. Play into what the defense is giving you. Blitzes. This time Shea lets him go. Good job downfield. Watch Shea's going to let him go and take it. Watch Marquise Walker downfield get the block. You'll see it right here. Look at him staying with his man, number four. That's a great job. It lets Shea get past the first down marker. Trying to be conquering heroes today. Michigan continues to move the clock or move the ball, but the clock continues to be their enemy. Under three minutes to play. Here's Walker. Walker's inside the 15 to the 10 yard line. They'll mark it at the nine. Three plays in the in the row. Michigan State has tried the same blitz. It worked once. The other two times they've gotten burned on it. Boy, I tell you what, Tom Brady right now looks like the curator of clocks. He's done a marvelous job of keeping that clock around three minutes. Absolutely. First down, Wolverines needing a score badly. Shea inside the 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Michigan. Aaron Shea. <laughs> We've got a game. Tom Brady, 30 for 41, 286 yards and two touchdowns. Great job by Shea getting free again. 67, Brandt, you're going to see get a block. We don't see it here. We'll see it on another replay. Good job. Shea, great job getting in the end zone. The extra point is good. It's 34-31 with 247 left to play. He was 10 for 12 on that last drive. He was 8 for 8 on the drive prior to that. That last drive was 12 plays, 96 yards, just over two minutes. Unbelievable performance coming off the bench. But is it too much, too late? Well, we'll find out. There's still 247 left to play, and you better believe it could be an onside kick coming. Yeah, normally on a kickoff return team, you have linebackers and linemen in there to block for your return men. But on a hands team, you got the guys that it speaks for itself. You got guys that can handle the ball. Do you know what? Receivers, tight ends. With this kind of setup, it's not bad to do a pooch kick back here somewhere. Because once it goes 10 yards, it's open for anybody. Here you go, just two linebackers. Other than that, you have safeties, defensive backs, and wide receivers in there. All the good hands, people. That's a good point. A pooch, a pooch kick right over the top of it where it's a live ball and just have your speedsters get down and cover it. Here we go. 2.47 to play. Three point ball game. The onside kick. And Michigan State got it. Well, normally in an onside kick, you don't want it to go like a line shot like that. You want a couple of hops on the ground that is followed by a big hop so the ball is high in the air and then you kind of have a jump ball for it. That one not very well executed by the kicker. You know who got it? Plexico Burris. Well, there's a shock. What a day <laughs> he's had. He has been everywhere. Again, the onside kick, you want it to bounce. You want it to end up in the air. This is a line drive. Plexico Burris, like a shortstop there with the scoop. Tay, still put it on the ground, though. Michigan has two timeouts left. They're battling the clock, and right now they've got to get the ball back from Michigan State. Big hole, Clemens, right side. First down, State. That was basically the same play they, that they ran for the touchdown a while ago with Moss. This time Clemens ran it. Sakura pulled the guard again to, to kick out and gave Clemens the hole. 22 carries, 86 yards for Clemens. And Michigan takes time out. They have one left. 
Well, college football next Saturday on ABC. Some of you will see Heisman Trophy candidate Drew Brees as he leads 15th ranked Purdue in a Big Ten matchup against 11th ranked Michigan State. Plus another regional action, Colorado against Texas Tech, Virginia and NC State in the ACC and Cal taking on UCLA. Bob Toledo's guys, that's next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC Sports. UCLA, uh, I believe you know somebody on that team. Kevin Brandt, number 32. He's a freshman. Yeah, he's he's a freshman. Loves it out there, but they're struggling right now. Yes, they are. They've only beaten. This is a team. I obviously everybody remembers last year at 20 straight wins, fighting for the national title, upset by Miami. This year they've only beaten Boise State, and Fresno State. That the whole Pac-10 really kind of having some trouble this year as well. That's a big play for Michigan State getting a new set of downs. Even though it was first down, back to first down again. Easily will make Michigan waste. Another timeout. Key here, stay in bounds. Stay in bounds. What a great scene this has been all day. Spartan Stadium, 72,027 seats, and every one of them has somebody sitting in it. First down, time, Michigan State. Game started out as a defensive battle. Very stingy early on. Here in the second half, both teams have lit them up. 34-31 is our score. Here's Clemens again, down to the 30. Now remember, this game was 13-10 at halftime. Michigan State winner. They turn into offensive juggernauts in the second half. Michigan takes its final timeout with 2.29 left. Executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. The executive producer of college football is John Filippelli. Coordinating producer is Bob Goodrich. And the producer of this game today, and what a job he did, is Bruce Clark, the director who gave us all those fine pictures, Patrick McManus, the technical director, Mike Blazo. Associate producer, Chris Pfeiffer. We borrowed him from Monday Night Football. Associate director, Russell Brooks. Assistance to the director, Chris Damiani. John Coral, the spotter, is Mark Williams, and our statistician giving us all the numbers today is John Madden. It takes a lot of people to make us sound smart, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm telling you, with John Madry and Mark Williams up here, we've got the biggest booth in television. Yes, we do. Let's go down to Chip Tarkey. Well, Timmy, you mentioned the Paul Bunyan Trophy being one of the ugliest trophies, according to Coach Lloyd Carr. Let me show you one of the prettiest. This is the Sears National Championship Trophy, and you know what? It has been at Michigan's games three times this year, but the home team has won overall 19 out of 29 times. Well, it's second down and long. Here goes Clemens again, and they've got him. So it'll bring up third down and long with 222 left. Well, this is a situation now Michigan State team always finds itself do you go for that first if they get the first down the game's over but now it's third 10 do you risk a 10 yard pass where it's an incompletion and stops the clock or do you try and get your field goal kick or some good positioning here if you want to take a shot at a field goal under two minutes we go third down, nine. Third down and a long nine almost ten Bill Burke with time, throws. Who's he looking for? He's looking for Plaxico Burris. He's got it. First down, Michigan State. Ten catches for Burris. Oh, what an afternoon he's had. Let me tell you, Tim, I love that call. Too many times you see an offense just run it again, keep the clock running, and have their defense win it for them, which Michigan State's defense is capable of doing. Go for the throw. Go for the kill right here. They go for the first down, and they get it. And why not go to the big man? Drags his feet. One foot in bounds, remember. Oh, there it is. There it is. What a great job of getting that foot down. Just a career game for Plaxico Burris today. Clemens. Clock continues to move under 140. Past Andre Risen today for the school record in receiving yards. You know what? He showed everything today, though. Not just his receiving, but his running after the catch, his blocking downfield. He was the complete package today. Got off to a slow start this year. Had a bad thumb. Didn't tell anybody about it. 
but just wasn't making catches. And after the first three games, he had more tackles than he had touchdown catches. All of a sudden, they started taping that thumb. He started making catches again, and what a day he had here. Clemens down to the 16-yard line. Under a minute to play. What an absolutely huge psychological and emotional lift for this Michigan State team. Oh, they appreciate him here in East Lansing. Some happy fellas down there. A lot of hard work for players on that field on both sides. Michigan, a great job making the comeback led by Tom Brady, but can't say enough about Michigan State sticking to their game plan and executing very, very well today. Today, Chevrolet's players of the game, Tom Brady and Plexico Burris. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And beginning this year, Chevrolet will also donate $1,000 to the two high schools. That's Green Run High School in Virginia Beach for Plexico Burris and Sierra High School in San Mateo, California for Tom Brady. What a game they played today. 34-31, the Spartans beat the Wolverines of Michigan. Once again, the final score, Michigan State 34, Michigan 31. Coming up next, another Big Ten battle. Purdue travels to Ohio State. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, part of the GO Network. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence.